Good evening. Welcome to the Planning Board meeting of August 27th. Um, and we're going to start with uh, Echo Brook Lane. Take it away, Echo Fran. Lane. Thank you, Madam Chairman. So we're here to discuss Echo Brook Lane, um, which, if you'll remember, I don't know, was it two months or so ago, we issued an ENR approval. Um, this is for um, land off of um, lumber and uh, granite. Um, where, oh guys, where um, the applicant is looking to um, take one of those parcels and divide it into, um, from one into four lots that are going to be built upon. Uh, we approved the A&R at that time. Um, since that time, there's been additional information that has um, come to light. Um, specifically, there was uh, a 1976 uh, ruling and a 1988 ruling um, that stated that any subdivision of that property, lots one and two, would require uh, kind of a full plan. Um, and we wanted to, and, and this was brought up um, by the applicant as, as well as Mike Shepard before issuing building permits, but we wanted to um, address this um, and how it applies in this case. Um, so I'm going to kind of let Chris and, and talk a little bit about what they're looking to do. And I think the board, they're looking for clarification um, and from the board's perspective that what we've approved in the A&R is correct. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of that detail uh, in terms of the subdivision of the lot. Um, and then like to get some clarification moving forward so that you know, Mike has the ability to issue the building permits and the applicant co can go forth. But Chris, I'll, I'll turn it over to you if you want to make any additional opening comments or statements. Thank you. Chris Nation. I'd like to have Mark Cadlack explain this in, um, so that he can speak to it. Thank you. Mark Kablack, I'm an attorney. I'm representing South Mill Street LLC, which is the owner of the property shown in green on the screen in front of you. And that same plan is up on the chair here. That was the subject of the A&R plan. Uh, we're here tonight to go, to go back through um, two decisions, and um, the first of which occurred in 1976, so quite some time ago. Uh, but I'll try to be brief, because I think the issues um, ultimately are fairly simple. Uh, on the screen, and uh, in color coding is the area shown in red. That was the subject of the 1976 Echo Brook Lane subdivision. And the area shown in blue, which is north of the area shown in red, this, this is um, shown with the north arrow pointing to the left, uh, was the area resulting in a 1988 modification of the Echo Brook Lane subdivision. Uh, once more, the area in green, only a portion of which is in the Echo Brook portion of what's shown on the plan, is what was uh, endorsed by the board some months ago and is uh, what is owned by my client. In 1976, uh, the planning board issued an approval of a three lot subdivision plan with frontage on Echo Brook Lane, and that again is shown in red. When it issued that approval, it said everything, in the event the property owner wanted to do a further subdivision of anything north of what they were looking at in 1976, meaning that area shown in blue, they would have to come back and get a formal modification. That's in fact what happened in 1988. And in 1988, when you look at the minutes of 1988, the board at that time looked at all of what they had approved earlier in 76 and what the conditions were. And there was a discussion about Echo Brook Lane, how would it be extended, what type of drainage improvements would be provided, uh, whether there were any wetland issues. And when the board issued its decision, it said, instead of just focusing on the area in blue, it said it, 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 it took all of the land, meaning both the red and the blue, and it came up with a condition that said anything shown on either the red or the blue section of the property that was either subdivided or resubdivided would need to come back in for a formal modification. Uh, I don't believe, there's nothing in the minutes that supports why they focused originally on the area to the north 
the information on the below. Why in 88 they expanded that to the, both the red and the blue uh, portion of the plan. But that's what the condition says. It's condition number three of the 1988 modification. Well, fast forward to today, we own the area shown in green. We're taking a portion of lot one created in the 1976 plan and we're revising the lot lines based on the A&R plan that was endorsed by this board. The clarification that we're looking for is that this A&R endorsement uh, and the building on these lots is not restricted by condition number three of the 88 decision. We have two. So the 88 decision said that if you if you change any of the, if you subdivide or resubdivide anything that's shown in red and blue, it requires a formal modification of the subdivision plan. Uh, one portion of our A and R plan includes the portion of there shown as both red and green. And so the uh, building when we and these lots are ready to go. They, the, my client is ready to build. So when we made attempts to file the building permit application, the building inspector, the assistant building inspector said, well, I need to clarify this. I need to reconcile the 88 condition and this A&R endorsement. And we have kind of two responses to that clarification. One is, when you look at the minutes of 88, the condition that they eventually issued is supported by the, what they discussed. They, they continue to focus on the area shown in blue. There was no discussion about expanding the conditions or restrictions on what they had previously done. And they, in fact, the minutes say they're just going to adopt the same conditions of 76 and put them in the 88 decision. So one argument is the restriction really doesn't mean what it says. The other argument, which is a little bit more direct, is that the condition talks about subdivision or resubdivision of the land. And in fact, Subdivision and resubdivision are defined terms under the subdivision control law. And the process of going through an A&R endorsement or the process of going through a lot line modification or any type of perimeter plan change is not a subdivision or resubdivision within the definition of Chapter 41. So ultimately, whether you look at the original argument that we put forward, which is that the 88 decision didn't mean to do what it said, or the secondary argument, which is that subdivision and resubdivision are defined terms and it doesn't include an A&R plan, um, we ask this board to give clarification both to us and to the building inspector so that we can move forward. Yeah, yeah so, and I appreciate that, Mark. I think that's a pretty good job. I'm going to really, the way that I looked at it and I met with Nira and I met earlier, is the second argument, right? The first argument says, what's the interpretation of the minutes? I think the second argument is pretty, I think it's very clear, uh, because when you're looking at the definition of a subdivision, um, um, state law of uh, 41L, it states that a subdivision shall mean the division of tracts of land into two or more lots, except if every lot has frontage, which each of those four do, and a public way, which the town certifies, is maintained and used as a public way, which also applies in this case. So that's where I think that second argument has some definition that we can kind of fall back on and feel that, yes, you know, we've approved the A&R. You know, it's really kind of a reallocation of the lot lines. It's not a subdivision because it meets the exception of what is defined, what the state defines as a subdivision. And I, and I think, and I'm just kind of boiling it down into, into plain English, what they've done with the a and having the access, um, having the frontage, so it's not a, a, a true subdivision. It's a reallocation of the lot lines. And by doing so, by meeting those um, exemption criteria, um, it allows them to kind of you know, go with that A&R plan and be able to kind of then you know, go to Mike and say, we can issue the, the building permits because... A, it met those exception criteria, and B, we signed off on the A&R plan and the criteria that are aligned within that. So I'm open to any other comments or thoughts. But Yeah, so we, we met actually a couple of times. It was really very complicated, and I appreciate um, the extended plan color-coded is really helpful. We were trying yeah. to do it without that the, the first time. Um, it helped me, actually, to finally see it um, looking at each of the lots independently. 
So lot four is not even a question for us. That's, that's totally free and clear. Lot three um, needed a small piece of uh, lot, uh, I'm sorry, green lot three needed a small piece of original lot, red lot one, in order to give it appropriate frontage. And I, I saw that not as a subdivision as, as Fran just went through the definition. And then the place where it took me a minute until we got the definitions of the law in front of us was uh, new green lot one. But it um, also falls squarely within the subdivision definition um, outlined because it has appropriate frontage. So it's not defined by law as a subdivision of the property. So it helped me to, to think about each um, lot alone. I was not at all comfortable with argument number one, trying to interpret what somebody might have been thinking by reading the old minutes. Um, I came to my comfort with it, um, seeing how the um, lot one is, um, is apportioned differently, the lot lines are changed differently, but not, does not meet the criteria of a, a formal subdivision, which would trigger the um, the formal subdivision planning. So that's how I got to where I got to on this. I don't, yeah, go ahead. Fran, take it away. I was gonna say, it, it, go ahead, Frank. Um, with the, your viewpoints, um, I think from the minutes, we can only really go by what they voted on. Um, <laughs> what their intentions were, we don't know. Can't really apply. So and what we voted on, too, we, we have discussed part of this. <laughs> A hybrid situation, but I think it falls into place clearly as Fran and Muriel just reiterated. Um, I have one question though. I have two questions. Currently, the current circle for Echo Brook is the red circle, or just about, just about, or an area to turn around once you go down so far. Uh, this. It's on a formal cul-de-sac. It's a turnaround area, or so the, the, uh, the red cul-de-sac uh, became redundant when they did the ADA modification and extended Echo Brook to where the blue cul-de-sac is. So currently, when you be driving down there, it's, it's, it's the blue cul-de-sac. Whether it exists on the ground or not, it does not. So it's the red one that currently exists now. It just has an area. Where you can turn no, the out. blue one it currently exists. See, the blue came in '88. And that superseded what is shown in red. But when we, when I went there, when, when I was turning around, was I turning around in the blue circle? The or blue, circle? blue circle. Okay. Yep. So good. It's more space than I than I thought. Um, my other question is, blue lot three and four. They're still viable lots, separate from the green lots. Blue lots. Those. So those are existing lots and actually family lots um, for the original owner of the entire um, uh, the entire subdivision off of Echo Brook that don't include sort of the bottom most portion of the green lots, right? So the red and the blue was family owned property if I understand it correctly. Yeah. Red was approved in 76. Yeah. Blue was approved in 88. But blue lot three, blue lot four could still be built on yes. and yeah. possibly will be built on in the future. Yes. Like, yeah. not, being discussed right now because right now it's just the green lots right now. Yes, yes. Thank you, Barry. Okay. So any other questions from board members? Uh, Carol? I actually have a question that's a little <clears throat> off the uh, topic, but both decisions refer to rebuilding Echo Brook in accordance with subdivision standards as a road. Um, this to me, although I don't have a problem with necessarily the changing of the lot lines, I feel that this is what both decisions are referencing in terms of more access on the book. And I, I'm curious as to the condition of the road and whether there's an intention to improve the quality of the road because to me, both decisions say that if you further subdivide the property, you'll bring the road up to subdivision standards. I think that's correct. I think that if there was a further subdivision of the property, there'd be a requirement to come back in here and submit a formal modification and get into the discussion of roadway improvements. But the, the argument, the second argument that I presented is 
that this is in fact not a subdivision or a resubdivision. When when the planning board uses the term in a subdivision approval that's contained within the subdivision control law, I think you're bound to that definition. And in fact, as the vice chairman read, an A and R plan and the re and, and, and the redescription of lots is shown on an A and R plan does not come within the definition of the subdivision or resubdivision. So I think your point is well taken, but it's not triggered by what we're So Carol, if I can speak to that. Um, we went round and around the merry-go-round on this, and I'm passing down the definition of um, subdivision under the law. And so we're, I, I, in fact, when I was making my comments, I tried to avoid the word subdividing the property. So under the law, it's not a subdivision if it doesn't, uh, if that each section has frontage on the road. So we are parceling out this property, but we are not, by definition of the law, subdividing it. And that is the distinction that we are, we are trying to grapple with and come to terms with. So, so question that does the fact that a private road. Public way, or there also is the provision a way shown on the approved subdivision plan that has been endorsed. So, Echo Brook Lane is a way shown on a subdivision plan in 1976 and 1988. Whether it's and whether it's built up to the subdivision standards or not, because in 88 and 76 they both waive that requirement. Um, so, it, even though it's not a public way, it is a way shown on a plan in existence and recorded. I also wanted to make sure I said for the public and for this group discussing it, we did approve the ANR plan and it is recorded. So that is an additional layer of complexity to um, solving this problem, however we decide to solve it. And it defines it as a public way, access on public way. Sorry, say that again. So <clears throat> as part of the ANR, one of the criteria is frontage, which they which they meet, but also access, right? Access must be provided um, okay. through so public way or yes. So the, so the access is via the private way to the public way, and that's why. It is. The definition doesn't mention private. It just says public way must provide vital access to the lot through one of these: a a public way, a way shown on an approved plan, or um, subdivision control law, or an ex a way in existence. When the subcondition control law took effect in the town. So then, then one follow up question. So, so we can approve a subdivision. <laughs> you must be loud enough. So, so we can approve a subdivision, but then that road is never built, necessarily built. So while I recognize that the subdivision was approved in 1976 and 1988, um, was it ever built out to the standards of which it was proposed? No, because the board waived that requirement for the applicant. Mainly, I think, because they were providing two family homes. They didn't want a, a full 40 wide with sidewalks, pavement. They wanted to maintain the gravel, and that's what the board had talked about back then. As we wrestled with this, too, when we talked about that blue portion, um, we uh, came to understand. So at one point, the family-owned the family -owned property had asked about additional family lots, and they were denied, although there was no decision in the formal uh, minutes, there's a letter, and then a couple years later, they got the approval for these with the addition of the water main access easement for the town. We speculate that it was um, a decision made to benefit the town and the family in that conversation, because it does, it does strike us that the decisions did not allow that, for sure. To, to Gary's point, when we most recently discussed this lot one, and, and forgive me if I forget all the details, but lot one was off a road that's not completely paved at, up to that point. And I, I think I remember that it's, it is going to be paved up to at least lot one. And 
I, am I correct in remembering it that way? Or? Are you asking about a discussion during the 89 meeting? Is that yeah. There was the only discussion that I recall was that we were talking about how many driveways we had access from Echo, and how many driveways versus how many on South Mill. And the answer to that was oh, lumber. Lumber, oh, not South Mill. It's so already complicated two enough. Lumber and, and two on Echo, and then we talked. But there's already one on Echo, so it was one additional on Echo. That was that was the only uh, conversation that I remember having. I forget who asked that specifically, but they're intending to.
think that they are family lot owns again, the Gorman family, and we believe from the letter from the Planning Board of 1988 that they got the ability to, to develop those lots because of the easement. We don't have a decision on that. Um, we have a decision on that. I'm sorry. We don't have a, we don't have um, specific minutes of the the request previous to the 88 decision where they were they get a letter denying their request from the planning board. So the other question is that was brought up by a neighboring person in 1976. Is Echo Brook, you said it's not maintained, it's maintained by its plowed by the town, but is it crowned frequently? I mean, when was the last time it was taken care of so the water is coming off appropriately? Um, and, and who is doing that maintenance? And who, is there any intention to do that maintenance once you put drives off of it? should be brought up to the standards that the town would require of any division. And I think this this addition of this lot, which is going on to Echo Brook, constitutes a change from both decisions as they were clearly written. So as you make the recommendation that the applicant bring the road up to that that would be my feeling that would be the right thing to do, yes. And I would second that as well. Can I just interject here? We, we have easement rights over Echo Brook Lane as a private road shown on a endorsed or, or actually approved subdivision plan, both in 76 and 88. But we, we don't control that road. We don't have any rights to do what we want to do in that road. Everyone has an easement right um, to use that road that takes access off of that road. Um, it's not our intention to develop that road, and by your endorsement of the A and R plan, you have already sanctioned th the fact that that road not only <coughs> is shown on a, an approved plan, but that it is open and passable for um, practical access. So that 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 decision, this board has already made that decision. What we're looking for, just to be clear, is we're looking for a clarification under the definitional standards of subdivision control law that an A&R plan, as endorsed by this board, doesn't constitute a, quote, subdivision or resubdivision. Now, that much is very clear. Uh, it's in the statute. If you want to look at the statute, it's Chapter 41, Section 81L. And I think we're clearly within um, the exception of subdivision and resubdivision. So the, so the argument here, the point that we're looking for, the clarification that we're looking for is that condition three of the 88 modification, which specifically uses the words subdivision and resubdivision, does not preclude an A&R endorsement, which is in fact what we've obtained. I mean, I, I think that point is, is pretty clear both in terms of the definition, uh, what's in the a &R, as well as the definition of a subdivision and the exceptions of the subdivision. I think it meets all those criteria. I need to interrupt um, just to take a vote to open and continue the public hearing for 730 for South Mill Street, the scenic road permit. 
If I could have a motion to open and continue. So moved. Second. <laughs> to, the, to the end of this discussion. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> so I'd like to kind of, I'd like to, um, I don't know if we have to call to have a formal vote on this, mm -hmm. Georgia, to, to clarify this. Well, so we are, so, and, and actually, Mr. Shepard is here, um, and from his perspective, he does need this board to take some action to clarify um, the decision um, so that there is no future confusion with deed and deed registration. So if I understand it correctly. So point. Um, I'd feel more comfortable if the town council reviewed this. This is, this is a tricky situation. And, you know, how many, how many more driveways are going <coughs> to add to this road without improving it? Just my point. I agree. And, and if I may, I, to Carol's point and to David's point, there were three previous planning board decisions. Now this is a, a clarification within the bylaws of what those three previous decisions add up to. Does it mean this for, for Mike or does it mean something else? Um, so I think we need a little bit more legal information. And if this current board uh, gathers this legal response from our town council, I would like it to include the possibility of the developer being responsible for the road up to the point uh, of the red area, which is the area that they own, because I do think that in the future this could be considered a public street. We may apply for that, and, and, and I think that if they're making these improvements, it would behoove the new homeowners to have a nice new street. Um, so if we could ask for that as part of our decision, and the town council can sign off on us, or whatever format we need, I'd feel better about approaching it from that point of view. One more question to the board. Sorry, can we just ask for an estimate of how much we think that would cost to pay that, just so we have a ballpark of does anybody have? I mean, it doesn't seem like a very long section of road. I mean, we we talking like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. I mean, I'm I'm just to all the points we've made that um, it would be we. I would look at this much differently if you guys said, okay, we want to rework all these lines, but we're willing to pay the road. So the fact that you don't want to I, give anything back to the town. I mean, we can come up with a per linear foot cost estimate, but it, in, from my perspective, it's irrelevant on two, on two grounds, and I'm not trying to be argumentative here. Yep. The first ground is we don't, we don't have the right to do anything in that right. Understood. Okay. You made that point. That's the first argument. But the second could, argument is that, that the application that's before you is, a, in, in essence, a clarifying clarification. You, you, you either clarify or you refuse to clarify. I, I don't see how this board can clarify with conditions that somehow relate back to either the A and R endorsement, the 88 approval, or the 76 approval. The clarification is either that you clarify or you don't clarify. It's this is a this is a purely administrative matter. There's no application to modify anything or to request new rulings. So to the yeah, board, I, I, you know, I like to make a comment on that point. Sure. I, I, I think he's right. Can I follow up? I I w I'll allow you to do that, but I think he's right in the sense of we've approved the a &R. What this is is strictly kind of a, a, a clarification of a division. I'm not going to use a subdivision, but a <laughs> reallocation of the different lots here. And based on the criteria that's in the law, it looks like it meets those criteria. So first of all, I don't think we approve an a and because we don't have any control over it, right? We can't say... We did we, sign we did, off we on did it. Sign off on the we did. Do, well, what is our other option other than signing off? Right. I mean, have we ever not signed off on AR? Um, go ahead. So um, I just want to say, for the benefit of the board, this is this is we fully acknowledge this is complicated. We've met twice for two hours each time. Um, 
to try and understand that. And the first time we did it was without all this nifty color coding. Um, I was not moved by um, arguments from the minutes in any way. Um, my, the, where I saw it, what I, first of all, I understand that we are a piece of the confusion. This board voted, this board in whatever configuration it was at the time, voted, and there is a registered deed, so we, we own that. Um, and uh, certainly previous boards have voted, um, and we also own those votes. Um, and under the strict reading of the law is where I came to an appreciation for the fact that it is allowable for to substantiate our a and r decision um, because we are not creating a subdivision under the law so that's where my vote is um, if we bring in a, a legal opinion and if it's the vote of this board to do that um, they are going to tell us that it is just as complicated as, it, as i just outlined um, and if you want the town attorney to weigh in on it we can certainly do that but it's not going to make our decision a lot simpler, I don't believe, but I, um, I, 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 I don't believe, but. That don't, I, I remember the point I wanted to add on. Um, my only concern is the original A&R that we approved is not for a public way. I mean, I could see the two on Lumber Street, that's a true A&R, because that's a public way, but the two that are not, not on Echo Brook Lane, that's a private road, that's not a public way. So it's that's. A way it's, it's a way it's shown. It's Correct. So it doesn't have to be, it has to either be a public way or a way shown on a subdivision or a, what's the third one? Um, um, a way in existence. Okay. A way in existence, and that's proved by okay. a bunch thank, of Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, that, that's fair. I, I, it's, not, not, it's not simple. Right, we, right. We, we hashed this out respectfully and lengthily to try and come up with a, uh, a plan. It seems like previous wrongs keep making more wrongs. Just, no, no, no. just, just one point. Only creates one more driveway. That's it. There are no other driveways. Um, to uh, another point, the road is graded, it is crowned, and it has drainage swales on. I I think most of the red section. Um, I'm not sure what happens further out back. And it, the road is the road is is relatively well maintained for for a gravel road well packed easy to drive on thank you for that if I may thank you for that clarification and, and the point being not so much you guys adding one driveway but the rest of the road other folks are going to want to add driveways and they're going to come back with the exact same thing that you said we don't need to maintain that road it's already existing and we could have three or four more houses on here depending Where? on how they slice it, it what's on the, the, the back right this lot five that goes all the way around no no what you, you can't. That's when the subdivision comes into effect, right. into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we believe that lot three and four were allowed despite the decision because the town got the water easement. Okay, but just help me out with one more question. So why are the lots, your lots, approved as an ANR on Echo Brook, but not other folks' lots? Can somebody explain that to me? Why couldn't somebody else come in with an ANR on Echo Brook because it's a public way on a previous because, plan. Mm -hmm. In theory, they lot, could. They could. If, lot, if red lot four had the adequate frontage, it, it could come in with an A&R plan. Right. I mean, they can kind of cut uh, it. Just four. Red, lot, red lot four? All right, so I can't see. Red lot. Not red lot. Three. Blue. Right, two, right. Blue. Red, red lot three. Yeah. Well, I was more... But he's looking, looking at, he's blue looking blue at blue lot, lot five. I'm looking at blue lot five. Blue lot five. Blue. Yeah. But those, right, couldn't those come in as A&Rs as well? Well, they're right. specifically mentioned in the minutes from 1988 is that any division of, right. of lot five, blue lot five, right. would have to come back. Okay. okay. Right. And Thank it's you. specifically mentioned. Right. Thank you. So right. And it actually says that this is, where we, this is where we swung around the whole thing. It says one, two, three, and four, and five, right? Yep. And that's where we get the definition of um, frontage on the road. Okay. So... so I, you know, I, I I acknowledge your question. Well, I just wanted to I actually um, revoke oh, that. Knowing, shown. knowing knowing that you know <clears throat> the ANR was approved and that lot five can't add more driveways on there, so I would feel yeah, comfortable without contacting the attorney. 
Thank you. And, and I know this is the first time you guys have yeah, seen this. Thank you. I've seen it a couple times. So it takes a while to. to, to and I, I don't like I don't like it any better each time. Um, do do we still need to have outside counsel? Or well, we should. Can I? Or do we want to be able to go right to? Right. Can I can I ask the board um, whether uh, we can can finish this conversation after our scheduled public hearings? I mean, you know, take it up again later in the meeting, or because we are now about to vote to press push off a second public hearing. I don't. What are what are people? I feel like we're almost done with this. Do you think we can talk through all the issues? Yeah. I'm in a place. Well, I know my vote, but uh, yeah, okay. <coughs> I'd like to conclude it. So can I just ask one more process question? Yeah. So if we, if the board votes to not clarify this, back to the question of we can clarify or not clarify, if the board, if the, if the board votes not to clarify it, then what happens? Georgia, what does happen? <laughs> So the, the, the building yeah. inspector has a hard time. Yeah, yeah. The yeah we would probably, I mean, we would go to the building inspector, ask for formal denial, and then bring an appeal of that denial. Just for clarification for the home viewers, the appeal would be to the ZBA? Uh, in the first instance, yes. We'd have to exhaust administrative remedies. That would be to the zoning board. Um, two questions, or two points. One point is, it might, not, it might be nice to hear directly from Mr. Shepard his, his viewpoint. And two, um, I'm thinking the town council could uh, give us, if they have a lawyer, maybe we should have a lawyer. Just, I just want, I want to feel a little bit better because when we did our green section approval, we weren't necessarily aware of the blue and red section previous decisions. And as Carol pointed out, uh, as a family situation when they, when they approved the road and if, as David pointed out, and Gary, if we can have improvements as part of the overall picture of three previous decisions added in with whatever we're doing now uh, would make a happier outcome for the new people that will be living there next year whenever the buildings are complete. Uh, and that's, our, that's, I think, our concern is to have everything done right. And I know these, this, these builders are very responsible and they, they've been in town forever and they're always responsible, but I just like to have a decision a legal mind on our side to make sure that that is what we're doing is the right thing. So at this juncture, I would like to entertain a motion to open and continue the continued public hearing of the Wilson Street Sol Solar Vo Photovoltaic Special Permit application to begin after the already continued public hearing, 17 South Mill Street. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. My apologies to the gathered crowd, but. <laughs> so I'd like to make a motion that we just vote on whether we should feel like we should contact town council or not. So it's kind of gone back and forth. I've gone back and forth myself, so I think that might kind of clarify our next step. Do Strabo, or do we need to do Be a formal vote? Before you do that, can we hear from Mr. Shepard? Sure. Mr. Shepard? <clears throat> Hi, Mike. Good evening, folks. Mike Shepard. Um, the nations applied for these permits probably six weeks ago. And <clears throat> because one of the lots was subject to some conservation issues, the, uh, that long missing 1976, 1988 decisions were discovered. I'm the guy that issues the building permits for the town. And, and if I issue a building permit by mistake, then <clears throat> it could be very costly to the town. So I'm usually careful about this stuff. You guys did an ANR plan, uh, which I agree with. They had frontage, they had square footage. It doesn't have to be a public way. Um, it's just one of the basic tenets of zoning. Um, <clears throat> but when I read the other decision, that, you know, when I said, well, you know, perhaps we should get some clarity here. What do they really mean? I have, my, as far as my own two cents, I, I'll try to offer what they meant. Uh, the Gormans owned the majority of this property, and, and <clears throat> they created the family subdivision that made this road. And it was back when it was still America, and planning boards allowed those kind of things. Um, <clears throat> this, the cul-de-sacs weren't constructed, the road wasn't paved, sidewalks weren't put in, they waived all of it because it was a family thing, and that's what we did in Hockington back then. Uh, the other part that, 
nobody's spoken to that there's probably no one in the room that is aware of is <clears throat> Joe Kalola's project is just to the north. Everything to the left of that picture is north, and that's where Joe is. Joe's road, um, um, Daniel Road, stops right there at that point where that little where that kind of trail goes. <clears throat> there was, <clears throat> at the time, Joe wanted a way to get out to Lumber Street. Uh, because that was going to, the Teresa Road subdivision, that just made sense. As a developer, perfect. Two ways in, two ways out, it's all good. Uh, the, the Gormans didn't want it. Um, and at the time, the town <clears throat> was kind of anal about making sure that Joe didn't get to do that. Um, and at about that time is when the family subdivision came about. And that's why the language of any further subdivision north of this line which is all that big space, is you've got to come back. Now, all of us know that if you're going to re-subdivide or subdivide anything, you have to come back anyway. Now, why the planning board said that, I have no idea, except that I think they were reacting to the public <clears throat> fear that, you know, overnight a road was going to poke through from Daniel Road and end up on Lumber Street, and life was going to end as we know it. Um, <clears throat> so... Looking back and, and sitting back is the, the I could very well issue these three building permits tomorrow morning. That's within my rights. Um, but again, I wanted to make sure, if, you know, from the town's perspective, that you know there was there was no liability. Hence, I asked the question. I assume um, the planning board would just get together and do what you're doing now and what you've done in the past, and attorneys would speak and and. Uh, you know, I know the subdivision control law. I know what an A and R is. I know that this isn't one of those. You know, it's it's different. Um, so, in retrospect, probably six weeks ago, I should have issued the three permits. Um, the uh, because you know it is what it is. Nobody would have sent me to jail because I made a mistake. They're certainly not going to send you because you did an A and R. You didn't know about the other thing before either. So, <clears throat> this is an effort. I think. Uh, to make it right. In my own mind, <clears throat> it had nothing to do with the, the Gormans that live at the end of the road. They don't want a paved road. They want the dirt road they've lived in all this time. When somebody comes back to develop the blue land next year or the year after, that's when you get your shots in about developing the road. You, you know, this is one more driveway on a, on a dirt road. It's not that big a deal. Um, the, uh, I told the nations that you know, the alternatives they had at the time, this is six weeks ago, is I'll deny the permit, you go to the Board of Appeals, and the discussion takes place there. But I suggested to them that they probably first go to the Planning Board, because the Planning Board knows this stuff a little bit better, and explain the situation, and ideally get something from the Planning Board that says, yep, we're okay, we did the right thing with the ANR plan, we understand what they did back in 70, 76 and 88, but we don't think it has anything to do with this. Uh, we still have our options open later on when the blue area gets developed, if it ever got developed. Uh, Joe Colello is long out of the picture. Daniel Road's not going to get continued through, at least in my lifetime. Um, so there's no harm and no foul. Um, the, uh, you know, that's, that's where it stands as far as, you know, my perspective. I'm not often, often an obstacle to the process. All I was looking for was a simple clarification. Yeah, Mike, I think it's probably da -da -da -da. you can go either way. Um, but I think <clears throat> the argument of an a and R not being a subdivision kind of drives everything. You know, they didn't say no further a and R plan. They said no further subdivision or resubdivision. They had a and R plans back in 88 and 78, 76. Um, I think it's a simple thing. Um, and again, I'm, I'm the guy that issues the permits, and, and it could be said that I issue way too many of them, but all the ones I've issued are on legal lots, and this one will be too, um, because it all boils down to my opinion. Should we go with my motion? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, have you had any contact with the people who live at the end no. of Echo Brook Lane? And do they have uh, any input? Are they been notified of this hearing? Or? No, they, they, they of course, were, were, I, I suspect, a part of the public area when you're approving the ANR plan, and, but no, they nothing. There's no public notice, is there, for an ANR plan yeah, now? But, but, sidewalks. Right. So 
So that was helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I know you did the right thing. Thanks, So, do we need to, Frank, I do want to address your question about town council. Do we need to give an opinion of town council? Or are, do we feel sufficient with the information that we discussed here to be able to give a clarification? I feel better with Mike's input. Um, we don't have input from the abutters that are directly at the end, but that's neither here nor there because we're talking about the red area and they're deep blue. Um, but they would be affected. But they, for, the an, an our pro, for the A and R process, that, you know that process played out appropriately. We just didn't have the fullness of this conversation for them. I'll, I'll defer to the rest of the board on this. What a so. Um, any other further comments, questions from board members? Um, Sounds like we're all okay with us going to council. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'll just say publicly and clearly, I am because I came to terms with the definitions under the law and, and came to understand it that way. So I'm comfortable. And we learned a lot more from this conversation. So I feel more comfortable as well. Very good. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the clarification of the A&R based on the legal criteria of um, what falls under, not a subdivision, but a re a reallocation. Mark, what's the right term? Well, it's a division, but it's not a subdivision or a re-subdivision. A division of the property uh, in alignment with what was submitted in the A&R plan. Is that language that works for the building department and the registry of deeds? I think what I would uh, prefer, uh, I'm not sure, I won't speak for Mike, but what I would prefer is a vote that would be reflected in your minutes that would indicate, clarify, that condition number three of the 88 decision does not apply to an A&R endorsement. George, can we use that language? A&R A &R is not restricted by condition number three of the 1988 decision. Yes. 2018 A&R yep. is not restricted by 1988. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah the specific date of the A&R signing would be, I think, most helpful. Yes. yes. Especially 10 years from now when you're looking back mm -hmm. the road and what happened then. So I'll entertain yeah, a motion at the end of Mike's lifetime. Okay. <laughs> and, it, okay. and it'll be reflected in our notes, but any subdivision of the blue lot five will trigger the Yes, right, because yeah. this is specific only to um, what they they no, it says um, any development of lot five, that's actually condition number two. Yeah. Any development of lot five shall require construction of the access road yeah, and full conformance with the subdivision rules and regs. The terminology that was used earlier was reallocation of lot lines mm -hmm. that we can use to yeah. adjust for lots one. Lot one and two. Yeah, Georgia, we got it? Yeah, I think we had a motion to tell them. Yes. yes, is that, it was your motion, Frank? No, whose motion? I'm sorry. My original motion was to vote, but I'm okay with withdrawing that motion because we talked it through. I'll make the motion with that following language. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. All right, there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, all this those for clarification. Can we just have a read back what the <coughs> motion is? Sure. So I, I had the 2018 date, A&R, is not restricted by condition number three of the 1988 decision. And that's what I have. And then watching it again on TV, you had, we're going to say, the, you had made a motion to approve the clarification, and then you further went on. So it, combining those two, it's going to be the 2018 A&R decision is not restricted by number three of the 1980 decision. Does that clarify for you, Mark, exactly. with that? Good. Can I just make sure we clarify in the minutes because of the, the actual language in the law of subdivision and division? Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, Mike. You know what, can I just say, nobody can hear you at home if you don't, I'm sorry. Three people at home can't hear you. Looking out for the people that buy these houses that the nations are going to construct. And when they do the title search, they go through and they go through and revisit all the same stuff we just did. So I would ask that this letter or this vote <clears throat> be in such a form that it could be recorded at the registry along with the A&R plan. So 
any future attorney can look at it right away and say, mm -hmm. you know, I have to revisit the last 25 years. That's all I ask for. All right, I think we're ready for a vote. No further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? So carried. Awesome Thanks. job. Thank you guys. Bye, guys. Was not super simple. Well, I appreciate this board for drafting it much quicker than the well, It I took did. us eight hours, so you guys are champs. Good morning for the new guys. <laughs> Well, it did. Ha I mean, I legitimately, legitimately, we had to get to a place that, where we could plant our feet, and when we did, that's kind of where I stayed. But it yeah, wasn't yeah, easy. I think. I see no, I no. Clarification, just like with so he was pretty. So we are just for the audience at home and the audience here. We are behind schedule. If I can um, jump back in. We need to revisit um, or start the public hearing for 17 South Mill Street. It's a scenic road permit. Robert and Angelo Rizzo. Thank you for your patience. Welcome. Uh, thank you for having us. Go ahead and tell us what you'd like to do. Sure. So, um, you know, much of the reason why we love living on South Mill Street, aside from the, the neighbors, um, is the, uh, the, the scenic nature of the road. Um, you know, it was one of the things that brought us to Hopkinton. Um, and our proposal is to, in keeping with that theme, um, just restoring what was already there. Um, and that country wall, so, um, it's, it's fallen over over time. Um, so what we'd like to do is restack it and bring it back to its original glory, so to speak. Um, and then after we, you know, restack the wall, we'll, we'll decorate it with some mulch, you know, in the front, um, some grass, um, keep it more in line with the rest of the homes. Um, and um, I think one of the pictures you may have is, is of one of the homes that we're proposing to, um, to, to mirror um, how they set up their stone wall. Um, so we had an opportunity um, to, you know, review the proposal with over 16 families um, in our neighborhood on South Mill Street. Um, received, you know, glowing support from them. Everyone was willing to sign. Um, no one, you know, had any issues with it whatsoever. We wanted to clarify for them what we were trying to do, show them pictures, um, and just give them the background of what we're trying to accomplish there. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for uh, reaching out to your neighbors that way. That was amazing. Oh. Um, it doesn't always happen that way, um, and it helps a lot. It's a good way to meet your neighbors, too. Oh, there you go. Are you brand new? Yeah, we, oh, yeah. we, uh, we bought our home in February. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you. Yes. Welcome. Um, so this we just got tonight. <laughs> it's a petition. You guys are really, um, you're on your game here. Um, and this is, the, I, I was just looking. We didn't have the pictures ahead of time of what the proposal what proposed was. Mm -hmm. and so that's actually that one tonight. of the stone walls on South Mill. Mm -hmm. um, so we just... Kind of give the feel of the mulch and then the, the grass to the street um, kind of makes a nice little transition. That's great. Do, do you um, intend to use any new stone or just existing stone? So the good thing is, you know, the existing stone fell over, so it's on the right or the left side of where the wall was, so we can basically uh, have someone restack that for us. There's also um, a pile of it, um, you know, towards the, if you're looking at the lot line, it would be to the left. Um, so we can use a lot of that. But if we need to bring in, you know, existing stone, you know, I spoke with, you know, a couple of the, the masonry yards in the area, and it's, it's just New England field stone that we could bring in to, um, to fill in and keep it a consistent height, consistent um, width throughout the, uh, the entire span of the wall. Yes. Yes. I really think you did a good job of providing photos and, and notifying your neighbors. Doing, doing the right things to do the right uh, thing for this project. So um, I'm full support of it. And, uh, thank you for your assistance. Oh, thank you. Georgia, did you have any comments or concerns? or? Um, so I did want to note that Amy had kind of brought it up, to, if, that's, if you mm -hmm. want me to speak to it, that yeah. there, um, she had asked about the previous approval. So there was a previous approval in 2016. Um, so a developer bought six of the lots on um, South Mill. Three of them came before you guys in 2016. 
um, for removal of the stone wall to uh, accommodate the new driveway. So for lot 21, which is 17 um, South Mill, I think they had said 20 feet in aggregate of all three lots. So I'm assuming maybe five to six feet of stone walls removed there. Um, I can't confirm if it was done as proposed because the board doesn't really have a, a closeout process. Um, but your driveway was built and a condition of that approval is any stones removed for their driveway um, be used to rebuild the wall at five south mill. So just as background. I had been asking Georgia to look this up. I have been hoping that there might be photographs from what it looked like prior to the 2016 that could help mm -hmm. with the reconstruction. So, okay. But anyway. They did note in the minutes that the, the existing stone wall at 17 South Mill was pretty sparse. It wasn't a pretty big built up wall like it is at 5 South Mill. Any other questions from, yes, Dave? Just one comment. I, I support the rebuilding of the stone wall. I think it'll look nice. The only comment I would make is, if you do have to bring in other field stones, you might have a hard time matching colors. So just something, obviously, I'm sure you're considering. But Sure, sure. Yeah, we're, uh, we're in talks with some of the, the local landscapers and masons to, uh, to see what we can do there. The, the good thing is, you know, there's, we do have that extra pile, so I feel like it'll be, you know, probably one pallet we might need to, and we could break it up. Um, and my kids will make it messy pretty soon, so. Quality, be quality before you controlling know the work. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Anybody else? All right, so I am wildly looking through here for the conditions we have to ensure. Well, do we need public comment? Is there any public comment? Thanks, Amy. You are consistently Otherwise, great about that. Yep, you have to come forward to the mic. So we have to share. And just say your name and your address. Uh, Samantha Perkins, and I'm at um, 14 right across the street. Okay. And we're just in full support of it, so <laughs> we just want you Well, know. thank you for coming. No Appreciate that. Thank you. Look at, look at how it can go when you talk to your neighbors <laughs> first. <laughs> I'm very excited. Okay, I do have the approval criteria. So the planning board's decision on an application for proposed work affecting scenic roads shall be based on consideration of the following criteria. The degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designation was originally based, and we uh, seem to be in agreement that it will improve and not adversely affect that. The necessity for the proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, or convenience, and I'm not sure it flies in the face of that, I don't think public safety is a concern. Um, compensatory action proposed, such as replacement of trees or walls, so that's if trees come down or walls come down, but you're looking to rebuild it. Availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work, which could reduce. So we're, these, these conditions are when you're sort of taking it down, or as opposed to when you're coming before us to put it back together in a like condition with the surrounding area. Um, so I don't think you have any trouble with uh, reducing or eliminating anticipated damage to trees or stone walls. It's the opposite of that. Um, and whether the proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historical values. And I think that we're um, safe on that one as well. Um, so I will entertain a motion to approve this. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Thank you. Thank you again for your patience good and good luck and welcome to Hopkinton. Thank you. Okay. okay. We are now um, on to. Oh, I would like to entertain a motion to close the hearing. Thank you so much, Kobe, for keeping me honest. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of closing the hearing? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Now the um, solar project on Wilson Street. Public hearing. Public hearing, yes, we had continued it too. Yeah. Look at us go. All right. Okay. So um, just for purposes of the record and the public's benefit, um, we do have finalized plans. They did come in last week and they haven't changed. Is that correct? Yes, July 30th is the okay. last meeting. All right. So um, I'm going to ask you to um, start at the beginning, but you can summarize the work that has been done. You don't have to uh, 
say everything again, okay? Welcome, Chris. Sure. For the record, uh, my name is Chris King with Atlantic Design Engineers. On behalf of TGA, we're here to summarize the changes since we were last before you. Uh, just to go through kind of a bullet list of outstanding items at our last hearing, uh, I believe uh, we've uh, received final sign-off from uh, Beta Group as far as the engineering and, and technical issues. Uh, we have, uh, since we last met with you folks, we've received our approval from the Conservation Commission. Um, so our order of conditions uh, uh, should be on the way. I think uh, Don was just waiting uh, to make sure there wasn't anything that was impacted per planning before he finalized the special conditions. Um, you're in receipt of a series of letters which um, uh, outline or address um, a couple outstanding issues that were talked about at some of the previous hearings, um, one of which is the point of interconnection. Uh, you do have an email on record from our client, TJA, uh, outlining uh, uh, the fact that Wilson Street is the point of interconnection for this project. Um, we have um, uh, gone through uh, a pretty intense due diligence process as part of this process. Um, and at that point of time, due to a number of reasons, um, Wilson Street was identified as our point of interconnection. Um, we, understanding the sensitivity of Wilson Street being a scenic road since we were last before you, uh, we've uh, relocated some of the customer equipment, if you will, internal to the site uh, and gone underground. In addition, uh, there is some equipment, customer-owned equipment, uh, that's uh, required to be located up around the Wilson Street entrance drive, but again, we've relocated those to underground equipment cabinets, basically two equipment cabinets. Uh, so the only remaining items that are above ground are the utility-owned uh, riser pole uh, uh, and a meter switch, which go across to the actual point of interconnection on the east side of Wilson Street. Uh, Chris, I'm, I really apologize for this. Yeah. Because we were so behind, I need to take the vote on our public hearing that was for 750, but it's being continued. Sure. I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so I will entertain a motion to continue the public hearing that is Buckland <coughs> Street and Leonard Street stormwater, stormwater management permit. Uh, the requested continuance is for the hearing to September 17th, 2018. So at, at, we have to have a time. <coughs> So much we have. Uh, we had. Um, yeah, 8:35 is what we had. At 8:35. So moved. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so. Again, we um, have submitted a landscape screening plan, um, which I'll talk about in further in depth uh, on my next item, but that has also included screening around the uh, equipment pads up around the Wilson Street area uh, to uh, re you know, remove the visual impact. We've also placed a security gate closer to Wilson Street just to prevent people from driving down. And again, we're going with kind of an orna ornamental uh, wooden gate that um, fits in with the scenic nature of Wilson Street. Um, we were also in receipt of a letter from Jane Moran, uh, the chair of the Upper Charles Trail Committee, um, uh, investigating the potential for gaining an easement uh, through the project um, and discussions with Jane and um, d also discussions that were had at the last hearing. It was determined that the, the project site, if you will, is not a viable alternative due to the physical constraints, the secure nature of the facility, and the fact that it's just a leased area. Um, but the landowner um, has been in contact with Jane and is willing to um, uh, provide something in the event the alternative path is decided to be um, in proximity to the parcel. Um, so again, that any future agreements or correspondence to that effect would, um, of course, go through the landowner, Mr. DePetri, as he is going to remain um, the complete ownership of the 34-acre um, parcel itself. Um, <coughs> we're also in receipt of a letter um, from James Haskins of the, Hop uh, the Hopkinton uh, Historical Society. Um, again, we've submitted uh, correspondence from Deborah Cox, 
uh, president and um, um, archaeologist at uh, PAL. Um, PAL is familiar with the area, has pretty intimate local knowledge of uh, not only our site because they conducted the survey associated with the Tennessee gas pipeline which runs right through our site, um, but she was also, or her company was also involved in the surveys at um, Legacy North uh, most recently. And so um, she's offered, you know, her um, due diligence uh, just basically confirming that there are no historical assets identified on the site um, based on her search and her records. Um, and then we've also included uh, interpretation from our attorney uh, regarding uh, the, the nature of the, uh, the stone landscapes. And um, we've also submitted a plan that was prepared based on Mr. Haskins' letter, which identifies the areas of uh, the reported sites. Um, and we've overlaid that on the site plan with a chart which basically identifies whether the sites are not to be disturbed. We've introduced construction protocol that was coordinated with PAL that was implemented on other projects successfully where they basically build, uh, for lack of a better term, a, a temporary uh, structure or maybe a temporary box uh, depending on the site and, and, and its size. And then it's to be maintained throughout construction and then removed, basically ensuring that the stones aren't disturbed. Um, there are uh, two or three of the sites which are in the middle of our project and unfortunately we're not able to um, ensure that those are not going to be disturbed. Um, but all of that again was um, prepared, um, it was a plan prepared by Atlantic along with two letters, one from PAL and one from uh, Attorney Joseph Pichella. Um, we were also in receipt of a zoning interpretation from the zoning officer regarding uh, the buffer requirements um, being applicable to the most restrictive uh, district in the event we span more than one district. Um, although we disagree with that um, interpretation, we feel that it's somewhat of a moot point um, given the fact that we've worked very closely with the abutters to come up with alternative screening that we feel um, would substantiate the board's ability to um, have a positive finding that the alternative screening is adequate uh, to allow us to have some relief from that buffer requirement, particularly uh, along the uh, border that we share with 15 Wilson Street, which would be the property owned by uh, Tom Shambo. Um, we've also worked with um, 21 Wilson Street uh, at uh, Mr. Cutter, Ed Cutter as well, um, and um, really crafted the landscape plan um, to provide a, uh, effective and adequate screening for those two, although the only alternative relief we're requesting is along Mr. Chambeau's property. We thought it prudent to also do the same with Mr. Cutter as he's in a direct abutter to the north. Um, in addition to that, we've beefed up the frontage screening, if you call it. It's uh, right along Wilson Street in the event, um, or <coughs> excuse me, um, it, with the effort to uh, further screen it from vehicular pedestrian traffic along Wilson Street itself, again, trying to protect the scenic uh, integrity of Wilson Street. Um, and uh, this past Friday, we ha I had a call from Mr. Cutter who had some kind of uh, minor requests, tweaks to the landscape plan that was previously submitted to you folks, uh, which the applicant is amenable to instituting. Uh, so if the board you know, finds it appropriate, I could certainly quickly discuss those. Um, uh, the, just uh, quickly, the general intent of the landscape plan, again, was to identify the areas we felt were going to require screening to avoid visual impacts. Um, given the situation without any land clearing taking place, it's hard to ascertain exactly the spot things are going to be planted, the spacing, the size, the species that's going to be required. So on the landscape plan, we've quantified the areas and put a number on the number, uh, the, the number of plantings um, that we propose in that area, which would be adequate to provide the effective screening. Um, we've also added notes and language in the notes that basically leave it up to the discretion of the landscape designer to um, really select the species, the spacing, and the size that's going to not only ensure maximum screening, but also ensure that it's a proper environment for the plant to establish um, so that it actually takes. Um, there's also a, a note on there 
uh, stating that prior to the installation of the planning, the landscape designer in particular for 15 Wilson Street, where we're providing plantings off of our property, um, that the landscape designer meet with Mr. Shambo to really select which species um, he'd like to see there. Substitutions, of course, are, you know, they're welcome. Um, but again, they have to be uh, amenable by both parties so that we are able to ensure that, again, they provide maximum screening and, excuse me, also ensure that they're appropriate for the area. Um, so again, the, I think that there's enough flexibility written into the language in the landscape plan um, that we're able to um, come up with something that uh, the both direct abutters are, are happy with at the end of the day. Um, we've also added um, that you know the pre-installation meeting, um, something like this is going to be difficult to document compliance. So um, we would recommend that maybe the special condition be amended. Um, to add a member of the planning board or a representative of the town to be at that meeting so that everyone has a basically a, a, a common understanding of the point of direction. Um, so once everything is installed and we go back uh, for a certificate of compliance or any kind of sign-off that's required, we're able to speak to this is what was agreed upon, this is what was installed. Uh, um, and then the last, so... The changes, can I, can Mr. Can I, just interject? Yep. Um, I think I read and remember that there was some off site screening on the properties that are above it, too, across the street. Was that still? No, the only off site screening is to the south along Mr. Shambo's westerly property line. We do have screening along the north edge of our array, but that's still on our property. And along that edge, we're providing an excess of the 75 feet that's required. Um, but again, understanding that the tree clearing operations are more than likely going to open up a couple view corridors. You know, we've given the opportunity for Mr. Cutter to um, have input with the landscape designer, have the town there, so we have, you know, clear understanding of what we're going to be doing. Um, and again, the note, understanding we're not sure of the scheduling, and things may look a heck of a lot different summer versus fall and winter. We've had the caveat in there that requires reassessment after the initial round is installed during the non-foliar months to make sure that, you know, if we can pick up anything uh, with a more hardy kind of evergreen species and fill in some of those holes that are more prominent in the winter, there's an opportunity to do that as well. Um, and then the only other change Mr. Cutter had asked for, could you go to sheet four if you don't mind, Georgia? Uh, there's one small section here at the top of the hill. Oh, it's not going to work. Uh, but there's one small section in the array that's at the top of the hill that's close to his back, his southwest property corner. Um, and we've basically moved the fence back uh, roughly 18 feet. Um, it doesn't affect the, uh, the drainage or anything like that. We had room to move it back. Um, basically to open up a swath where we could back some of the screening out of the existing forest, put it in a sunny spot, because um, Mr. Cutter feels that that's going to be the one spot that he's really going to have the most potential impact. So we've moved the fence back, gone from two to three rows of screening, um, and I actually have those changes picked up on a revised set of landscape plans if the board deems that's the appropriate way. Again, the applicant's amenable to instituting these minor changes, um, and it's really how the board would like to do it. It could be part of the conditions, or again, I have a, a plan with a date on it that could easily be referenced in the decision as well. Um, so that's a summary of the changes since we've, we've last been here. Just one or two. Okay. So um, what I think I want to make sure that we do is that we, um, we take detailed questions um, through the agenda, not expecting it to take as long, but this is the first time the board and the public has had your real finalized plans, understanding that the additional landscape plan is a little bit adjusted. Is that Correct. my yep. understanding? Correct, yep. yep. Okay. Um, is Beta here? Yep. Any, any outstanding... Concerns or issues from Beta's perspective? No. I can. All the engineering uh, issues have been addressed. So for the public's uh, benefit, our, our engineer, Mr. Paradis, has told us that uh, all of the engineering issues have been addressed satisfactorily. Okay, thank you. 
Um, all right. So does oh, oh gosh, sorry guys. Um, does anybody have any the board have any questions on site layout specifically? We're going to just walk through the agenda specifically. And I'm going to find it again because it disappeared. One of the, oh, I, probably not. Thank you. You want me to wait a minute, Dave? No. Okay. Um, so we are agreed that we are okay. We're good on the. If, also for the public, we have two members that can't vote on this. Is that, is that right? So Mr. Dever, Ms. Dever and Mr. Der, Derso cannot vote. Oh boy, I got stuck on the D's there. Um, um, yes. Actually, I have one question. I don't know if it falls under the site layout or not. But I'm curious if the tie-in on Wilson Street, if that has any impact on the scenic road, or if that's impacted at all by the scenic road designation. So I, I would just like to say that um, I, <coughs> I, from, from my personal voting perspective, I still have a concern that we are not utilizing the industrial property versus the scenic road I access agree, property. That's why I'm asking. Yep. The, the so. I don't know if it Georgia just, can help us with it that. It doesn't make sense to me that, that you know, we're, we're putting commercial equipment on a scenic road when there's an alternative. I just don't know if this is reviewed through a scenic road hearing or if it, if it triggers the requirements. So based if, if he hasn't, if they're quite, if he's not cutting trees, removing the stone wall and the other provisions in the bylaw, then the scenic road application isn't required. So there was previous discussion that they, you may have to file one, but for the interconnection, if it's not um, harming any of those areas in the interest of the scenic bylaw, then he's not required to file the application. So I, I think the answer really, Gary, is this is the place to address it in this particular decision, not Yes. Open for a oh, scenic road oh, decision. Okay. Did I hear that question? No, you, no, you did. No, you did fine. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to make sure yeah. we all had the same understanding. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any further questions on site layout? So I think we can go to that access and entrances, and I guess that this is really it right here. Gary's point. And maybe in general, uh, I have a preference, not that I'm voting, um, that you use the commercial side, not the scenic roadway side. Um, and that's something we talk about entrances and exits. Uh, if you need two -way entrances and exits and there is no disturbance of the scenic road bylaw, um, th then I think that would generally be fine. Um, but my personal preference as a non-voting on this issue board member is that you follow the uh, commercial side of the property, Route 85. Anybody else? Go ahead. Um, well, I guess this is the, the um, topic in the house. I think that's probably concerning everybody. I'm wondering if you could, if you don't mind going through um, the things that aren't, that are disturbed SG4, SS, and, S, mm. and SS in that lower industrial portion um, of access where you put the, the panels. And then, I guess, right on the fence line, SG2. Um, can you speak a little bit to those black dots on the plan and exactly what those represent? Um, and do you have images of them? Sure. Well, yes, those were taken directly from the letter that was uh, sent by Mr. Haskins to the board. Uh, so at the very end of that letter, um, there was a, a plot out from Google Earth that had push pins basically <coughs> dropped in the locations that were thought to contain the ceremonial <coughs> stone landscapes. Mm -hmm. We basically took that, brought it into our computer program, augmented it so that it fit you know, with a couple reference lines, and so we're able to show. That's why it's called an approximate location plan, because we don't have a way to actually pinpoint it with the information that we've provided. So those dots that you see correlate to the language in Mr. Haskins' letter. So where you have 
a, a, a god stone or a Manitou stone or a stone wall or some of them were just labeled as stone structures. We basically took what he had in his letter and basically blew it up on the site plan so it was just a little more reader friendly if you will um, and then based on the locations we're able to and based on the, the activities proposed within those areas we're able to come up with kind of a construction protocol for back of, lack of a better term to again these are approximate locations so based on those we're able to give our best guess as to okay this is certainly not going to be disturbed uh, it looks like we might be able to adjust a couple things here without any significant design change to preserve this area. Um, but again, we're not going to know until, you know, we get out there. Um, but the construction protocol, again, was all recommended by uh, PAL, um, who has worked on projects similar to this, solar projects similar to this. So, so I, I guess what I'd like to do is if at some point we could have an expert come in and maybe have a conversation about this because, you know, I don't know what a monument is without a godstone. You know, um, are we going to be destroying the future heritage of the site? Um, and, you know, I guess I'd like to know a little bit more information about that. I know you've worked really intensely hard on trying to make this come through. And, you know, um, you know I think it, it, has, it has my misgivings because of this new information. So uh, I just want to point out for the public and the board, we did add historical structures onto the agenda, and I'm totally fine having the oh, conversation. Sorry, no, 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 it's fine. Um, and I'm totally fine having that conversation now, but I just want to make sure that... But I think this might have something to do with the access as well, because I see it a little bit as a conflict. Um, if in discussing it, if we know, have a full knowledge base, then we can treat how these how these structures are going to be accessed um, and, and how they can be maybe better laid out or laid out alternatively so we don't destroy anything. Um, I think it's possible, um, a little bit less graceful than what's laid out, possibly. Um, but I think for, for history and for, and for, you know, our forefathers, I'd like to know, number one, how many of these structures are in Massachusetts? And, and then number two, so, so what is the effect of our, of our changing this, this backdrop of our, of our history? Um, and, and I think those would be some important questions before we mess with them. Can I just address part of yep. that? So yep. I, I'm Attorney Joe Pacella. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask the board to consider what I prepared on behalf of the applicant, um, which is a detailed uh, presentation for the laws that are applicable to this issue uh, in checking with what I also gave you the credentials for um, the uh, Deborah Cox from uh, PAL uh, on the first page, who is a, a nationally known expert uh, who essentially says uh, that there was nothing identified here. Uh, there's nothing on the National Historic Registry uh, the, um, I personally called the Massachusetts Historical Commission, talked with their archaeologist, who says this is not something that they protect, ceremonial stones. It's not part of anything that they deal with. Uh, and and they're, the, they're the people that then give the mandate down to the, to the local historical commissions. Uh, so what we're trying to do as the applicant is, despite the fact that my, my opinion to the applicant was that there, there, uh, we have a dispute about what's allowed under the bylaws, was to sidestep that and simply try to make everyone happy um, to the best of our ability. And what we're proposing is to, um, uh, to, sit, to um, basically take his opinion despite all sorts of other challenges that would be made to whether that's accurate or not accurate because there's a huge dispute in, in the archaeological um, community as to what is or isn't when these stones were stacked, whether they are Native American or not. There's a huge issue, but rather to just simply preserve them because this is a lease. This is, this is a lease that will end, and there, there'd be access after that. We want to preserve them. Uh, one of the things that then in talking with the applicant we could do is, is uh, um, you know, and just 
hoping the board acknowledges the applicant's desire to volunteer without uh, uh, heeding the opinion he's voluntarily agreeing to do that to to do that based on what pal's done in the past to protect them uh, one thing that we we could add to that is that we would uh, up to a five thousand dollar donation to the historical commission if mr haskins is willing to flag them because one of our concerns is is finding the same ones that he pointed out and so we would either pay him for his work or make a donation in that regard so that everybody's on the same page that we're protecting what what we all have talked about as as as, as potentially needing protection and again I, i'd emphasize the potential but i think that that's a fair resolution in order to move this along without having to get into a battle of experts as to whether these are or aren't ceremonial stones etc and i think there's only um the vast majority would be protected there would be a, a few that that are um that can, would be disturbed can we clarify on the plan i mean i have it in front of me but which ones you know right now you wouldn't have to touch and which ones are at so for example is sg2 something that you are sure you could stay away from or not sure i i assume sg1 sw1 ms3 ms2 are out of the way correct and then i wonder about sg2 sg2 it appears that we're able to stay away from that again these are approximate location so it's right. difficult to say but it looks like we're able to save sg2 there's a chart on the right hand side of that which identifies each one and gives an indication of whether or not they're not to be disturbed or oh i see okay but Um, I, you know what, I'm going to interrupt again, I'm sorry, and I'm going to entertain a motion to open and continue the public hearing for Whisper Way that was scheduled for 8.30 until the close of this conversation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you, sorry. Um, Oh, I get it. Here we go. In the tiniest of print, not necessarily really favorable for Mrs. Kramer at her state of life. Um, all right, I do appreciate the clarification over there. And I'm going to just take it. Does anybody else have questions while I'm peeking at this? with with um, Deb that um, we should entertain the possibility of getting an expert in to speak with us regarding this information it's uh, got to be enormously frustrating to to you know get some information like this that it is um, that it is uh, simply a proposed or a possible um, structures like this but nonetheless um, I think these are very important to consider and to understand um, what cultural significance and historical significance they may have, um, and um, and uh, despite the, the opinion given by um, Deborah Cox of how she did say that she's she reviewed the recorded archaeological and historical sites. Um, within the proposed project boundaries, clearly these were not identified and therefore were not recorded. So um, uh, there, may be, there may be none of them are true. You know, we do not know. The point is that right now we're all dealing with a big black box and we do not know whether or not these are real and that these are, you know, so I really feel that there's there's need to have some expert opinion. I didn't mean to cut you off. I wanted, no. that's okay. I, I wanted to add, um, I'm not sure that we know if it's cultural versus historical yeah. either. Yeah, and that's why I'm using those terms interchangeably because, yeah, because 
just despite you know your opinion, we certainly have a lot of different opinions that are of all I've read through all of them, and there's differences of opinion about the interpretation and the purview and so on. But I do, do believe that this board needs to have more information um, on that particular subject. That does not mean we can't discuss some of the other subjects related to this. And sure. Thank you, Mary. Amy. I'm going to mostly echo what uh, Mary said, that I went to that Stonewall workshop um, at the library a couple weeks ago, and they did say about it, it's very difficult to tell if a Stonewall is colonial era versus Native American. Um, and I didn't know if Mr. Haskins is speaking on behalf of the board of the Historical Society or just as an individual member, and whether or not the Historical Commission, which is an appointed board, has reviewed this yet. And is that their purview, or would this be ours? Um, because I, I do feel like we need a little more information since it's new to us and the, the places they're plotted on the map and we were not aware of before. I, I do have a question, Laura, for clarification. How was it identified? Did they just walk the property and, and say, hey, you know what, we, we found this? And it, it appears there was a trespass. Right, because it's private property, right? Yep. Correct. Well, and, we yeah, no, I, I, understand. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you, Shootsbury dealt with this before. Their bylaw, uh, this is about a year ago, um, their planning board dealt with it, and their site, they, they required, uh, for a solar project, they required a site plan to be done, which included locating um, all known mapped or suspected Native American archaeological sites or sites of Native American ceremonial activity. And they, and they denied the same last-minute letter saying there's ceremonial stones stacked on the property. Um, my concern with what you, I understand exactly what you're saying. My concern is we're going to be in the same place there are experts on both sides that will tell you that these are absolutely not ceremonial stones, nor are they of any significance. And there are people who, who, who have already uh, attempted to say they are, they are. So I don't, I don't think we're going to be in any different place, which is why my client is taking the position at this point of saying, look, we want to move this forward and, uh, and voluntarily agree, despite my opinion, um, the, to, uh, to protect these stones. I don't think there's any... And again, that Shootsbury matter had to do with burial sites, not ceremonial stones, which are very different. Um, burial sites are recognized under the National Historic um, Language. Uh, so um, my guess is these exist everywhere. It's a very slippery slope, I think, for any board to deal with because you may want to build a school someday and then you're going to regret making a decision. So to bypass having a decision on, on, the, on the substance of it what we're voluntarily suggesting is, is that we will deal with it appropriately under a special condition. So um, I appreciate your input, sir. Um, anybody else on the historical sites? And we're a little bit past access and entrances, but we'll circle back. Okay. Um, I appreciate that the developer is willing to uh, not disturb the stones, no matter what their provenance. Um, but the earlier question was, I don't think, clearly answered. Uh, on the chart, protection may not be possible is marked for MS1, uh, MSG4, MSS, and which are just by definition here stone structure and godstone. Someone it's basically all of these in here. So would that mean there would be, would be a panel over it or there would be no panel over? Uh, and how big are these structures? I'm assuming three to five feet. Uh, so what I think I heard, though, is that we don't necessarily know exactly. Like we, one of the first things you said was that you would invite uh, Mr. Haskins or some the historical commission to help flag them so we even know exactly where they are and exactly what they they think they should be identified as. Um, so I don't think I don't think that we have enough information. When this group did a site walk, that was this was this is newer information than the site walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Does, does anyone on this current board know what a godstone is? Other than mm -hmm. the pictures that were in our packet? Right. No. Yeah. Just no, we, we we're we're acknowledging that is, is yeah. it's like is it a geological name or is it a historical name? Is it a Right, so we so we can um, we can share uh, frustration from a schedule perspective with you, uh, but I think that um, I agree that we need a little bit more information, and I know that 
you know, it's a time-honored tradition. You can hire people on both sides of the argument, but I think in, from the town's perspective to do due diligence, we need to have somebody speaking to um, our interests um, on the issue, and I think that that happens all the time, and for all the right reasons. Does anybody, so does anybody have any, uh, I mean, I'm not exactly sure where we stand. This. So there's how many of us that can vote? Seven? Seven. And there's four of us that want some prof professional um, input on those, at least. Other people haven't spoken. But so I think that that's where we are on that. Does anybody else want to weigh in? And I mean, I'll defer to the board. I mean, this is the first time in my four or five years on the board that this historical site, well, I call it an issue, ha has come up which I find it, I don't know, it's surprising. It's just interesting that, it, that it's come up now. Out of the thousands of feet, miles of... And, and you know, Legacy North, Legacy South, the schools, the field. I, well, it's, I believe it's come up at Chamberlain Railing, too. It, it did after our decision, right? So this may be something that we, it is emerging for us to deal with. I think it's also important to note there was a detailed yeah. survey conducted as part of the Kent Tennessee gas pipeline which runs smack dab through our site in very close proximity to a lot of the structures that were reported by Mr. Haskin. So again, you know, I, I would agree with your view that I find it coincidental, funny that it's, it's coming up now at the last minute. Um, and I just did, and if so I'm just going to point out for the record, this is our first meeting with finalized plans. So be careful about the last minute suggestion for me. Sure, no, I'm, we've talked about this a long time, and we've resolved a lot of issues. Yep. But we have not, for the purposes of the public and their ability to impact the process, had finalized plans until this meeting. So to be honest, my opinion is, is this is a timely submission. Can I add to that? Um, I'm a big fan of solar power. Um, Carol and I were original members of the Green Committee formed by Matt Zedek. Um, but please have respect for the either the Native American, Viking, colonial era, whatever the significance of these uh, stones are, please have respect for that um, because that's something that goes thousands of years back. And what I, I like that the developer is willing to protect these um, but this isn't, when you're saying coincidental, funny, I think we're approaching this very seriously, and, and I can't vote on this, but I would urge my fellow board members to approach this seriously as, as we are. I think that, um, thank you, Frank, I think that we're at a point where we are going to ask for some sort of um, formal input from somebody who knows more than we do on this for the, on the town's benefit, so we just know that that's go coming, going forward. Um, anybody else on... Um, Access and entrances. Yes, Deb. Um, well, I know you've done a lot of. There's, there's two things. One, one thing is um, we did have conversations about um, putting um, green um, greenery on the other side of Wilson Street, and you said you would. The um, and um, property, I think, right? On the Hanowitch property, and um, anything that was uphill that was viewing down. Um, and I saw a little bit of retraction from that today. Um, my other concern is that here we have this scenic road, but we have this um, pretty much great access that, our, that the town's trucks have been using for a long time. Um, and I just wonder if there, there might be a little bit better of a balance in a loop um, that could possibly lead to maybe some negotiation with the town, I'm not sure, because that was their pit. Um, that, that, you know, possibly um, for, for going and, and giving of these, of these sites um, and or a trail that would lead to these sites for, um, for the study of students and, and historians that perhaps a slightly altered access maybe granted, I don't know, I'm just, uh, I don't know, that maybe a, a loop road of some sort might be considered if you gave up Wilson Street and, I mean, yeah, Wilson Street, 
and, and maybe also gave us a little bit on these sites um, that possibly there could be some kind of negotiation done um, because if this is important, it's important not to destroy SS or SG4 or any of it. You know, especially, I mean, I can even see the contours near SG2, even in this very, very small plan, is pretty significantly raised. So you've got something that was built up or used as built up on the land for this object. Uh, I, I, it's so hard to, um, SG4, where is it? Um, SG is a godstone. For this godstone, if in fact, you know, so, so first I think we should talk, maybe extend that conversation about access roads to a time when we can possibly um, talk to, to people, um, the DPW or something and how that land can be accessed. Was the right of way to Cedar Street given to this property or is that part of the property originally? The access on 85. The access off of the access off of Cedar Street. It was uh, it, what? How does the it was part That's Route 85. Route, Route 85. Yeah. I'm sorry. What was the? Was it originally part of the property, or was it given as an easement from from the town? Because that was their um, their uh, their their stone pit or their work their quarry. Quarry. Thank you. I am not. I'm not privy to that. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to know a little bit more history about how that right away was was obtained, and what and how that um, might be um, looked at in relationship to the trails committee and um, in preservation of these stone areas in this uh, uh, southern southwestern quadrant um, of the solar array. And by the way, I'm in favor of solar arrays too, but I but. But I think when it starts, when we start to talk about um, destruction, de destructing anything that, that could be ancient, um, I think we, we need to think seriously about it. So um, I'm going to ask the board to contemplate schedule. Um, and we are going to be um, revisiting this. Um, but I think in fairness, I want to make sure that we um, walk through and identify if there are open issues that the applicant can address the next time they come. Um, lighting is not an issue, right? Because there's no, there's no lighting. There's no lighting, right. So that's off the agenda. Screening I think we've talked about and we're gonna wanna know about the Hanowitz property that was property. discussed. Um, any open issues on the array size? Um, underground utilities, right? We, we've discussed that, and is it definitive that if you use the Wilson Street side, you will use the pole on the existing pole on the opposite side of the street? Or yes, okay. Right. So that was an open issue. And there was there was no way to go underground with the wires from one side of the street to the other. Uh, that that's again that's the utilities connection if you will so that work is actually performed by the utility uh, so we don't have a way to uh, dictate how the utility does its work um, where we control up to the customer owned infrastructure um, so anything that was customer owned okay. that's the stuff that we have the ability to control and that's the that's what we have put underground. Uh, so, well, to, to the chairman, if I follow up on that point, so what what would be on your side or the near side on Wilson Street would be a single pole, and the connection would go over top to the line, the existing lines that are on the easterly side, on the right. eastern yeah. side. Easter, Easter, Easter side. So, side. single pole, yeah. line going over. Question from the board on that. So how was the DPW able to do that? Because they guaranteed us that they were going under the road across and not having two poles. I mean, I don't understand why one project can do it and not another. Uh, fair question. I yeah. mean, I'm just kind of understanding what they're. Yeah, because I was under the impression. That? I was under the impression that was going under the road too. The last so time we talked. Pay them to do it. They can do it. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I thought right, that so. was in our materials that it was going under. 
to the yeah. westerly side, to the existing poles. Is that not so? The poles currently exist on the easterly I'm side sorry, of Wilson east. Street. Okay. So that's where we'll, that's where our point of interconnection is. But you're looking at adding a pole on the western side. Well, yes, we have right now there are two poles shown on the latest set of plans. Um, which again are the utility owned equipment and it's been our experience that they require separate poles for those two pieces of equipment. And how far apart are those poles on, on your side? Uh, I don't want to say they're and, and while he's looking through the chair I'm not sure if we want to address it now but I, I want to feel more comfortable I know we had a discussion a while back about what utilities are not underground further into the property because the, the, Just to the, the regulations do say that all should be under the ground. I know there were some exceptions. But I I think, but so let's make sure we clarify the utilities across the whole thing the next time. I think it, it's across the easement is what yes. is open. Well, yeah. Not so much the easement, but I know that, yeah, that might have been one of them, but I think there were a couple okay. of points there. Well, I think also what would be pertinent would be what height is are the lumber trucks that come down that road from the lumber company and will that affect them as well but so they'd have to be they'd have to be constructed so right. that they could right take traffic as, as right as they would anywhere right yeah, yeah. My, my concern would be they're taking down a lot of trees for the panels themselves if they're going to have above ground wires they're also going to be taking down trees and cutting back for that purpose as well so if we can minimize that um, okay, fair point. Um, do we have any open issues on stormwater management? As I'm hoping to facilitate not a lot of revisits on this. Okay. And um, I have a note about the Upper Charles Trail, and I um, absolutely appreciate that the applicant has some willingness to work with the Upper Charles Trail Committee. I would like some language that is agreeable to the committee and to the applicant to include as a condition um, understanding that nothing is definitive now. So some agreement there between the two, the, those two entities would be helpful for me. I think what he said is that the, we'll try to facilitate something with the owner. So we're gonna put some language in the condition. So uh, it's, this is right. his opportunity to have language in the condition that he finds acceptable. Um, all right. George, as you're going through that, one, I mean, Ariel, one, one, one question on back that. on the Why entrance and access, standing? Chris. Um, a couple of members of the board have brought up some questions or concerns about you know, the access on Wilson Street as a, as a scenic road. Um, is it your position that it needs, we need to have kind of two, two points of access, right? The one off 85 Cedar Street and then the second one off of? Off Correct. Of, uh, Wilson. Mm -hmm. Correct. I was actually going to ask for clarification on the access and entrances. It sound, currently, there's a wetland system that runs through the middle of the site. Yeah. So there's no upland connectivity between the two upland areas. Yeah. So that right there, I mean, it doesn't force your hand, but typically the Conservation Commission doesn't want you to result your project to result in direct impacts to wetlands if you can avoid it. Yeah. Uh, so in this instance. Um, you know, it's certainly, I mean, that's what's driving the two access points. Which, which is fair. And I think I liked your idea of the loop, but yeah. that would kind of then go right in conflict with the um, wetland type issue. But if I look at the plan, this so, is just, so actually, sorry. Uh, uh, it's totally uh, it's a, more a topic of a to flesh out, but we're okay. running out of time for tonight. Okay. Um, I, um, I just want to state for the record, that I do not believe we have um, we have answered the question about the utility connection off of the industrial site to my satisfaction. I just want you to know that that's where I stand on that, is that I know it's preferable and I know that it's set up the other way and it's a time constraint and a money constraint, but nobody has identified um, for this board exactly what those constraints are. It remains a preference to me um, and I think that it is um, it is a common sense approach to make the utility connection from an industrial side. So I just want you to know where I stand, and I know other board members have brought it up, but I don't know where everybody else stands. Um, before we leave, I would like to make sure I entertain um, comments from the public. If there are, we're going to need to continue this again. But um, is anybody from the public uh, interested in me? I'm 
commenting at this Sounds point. I just, yeah. Mrs. Zetta, you have to come forward, Mrs. Zetta, so we can hear you. If you can move. Um, I'm sorry. Ann Zetic. Uh, and your address? Uh, 39 East Main. Thank you. And Wilson Street. Yeah. Uh, that uh, for construction of Wilson Street, supposedly, that's part of the construction material and uh, machines would be underground, was the word you used, I think, so at the beginning of your presentation. Mm-hmm. You're having direct your questions to me, but they'll I'm have sorry. to answer. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, what do you mean by underground for construction material and the trucks and the things when they're when they're building the solar system? So what 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 did what you mean we, by some of the construction material and construction machines would be underground? Yeah. It was something about. I think you might get the, at the beginning, right at the beginning. Utilities? Were you thinking the utilities underground? Because we've been talking about utilities under the ground. I thought it, it's the it's the boxes that are going to be located underground. The, the so yeah, the electrical infrastructure will be located underground. Okay. okay I'm I'm very concerned about uh, the hills, the curves, for construction material. That, so uh, part of the I can speak to that part of the proposal is that during the period of construction, they will have to have a police detail because of the sight lines there, for sure. Mm -hmm. And that is part and parcel of your proposal, as I, re as I recall it. And roughly two months, six months? What is the duration of yes. the construction, proposed construction? Two or three months? Three to four months. Three to four, three to four, months. four months. Wilson Street. Uh, a scenic road is not the place to have a commercial development. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else at this point? Hello. Yep. Cutter. Hi, Mr. Cutter. Yes, yep, but when you get up here, introduce yourself to the public and your address, please. My name is Edward Cutter. I live at 21 Wilson Street, and I might not have a comment, depending on your answer to a question. Is the uh, issue of where the connection will be uh, whether it's going to be on Cedar Street or on Wilson Street uh, being further considered. And if so, then I won't make my argument or my position. Uh, but I just want to be sure that's still open. It's still open. Okay. I mean, uh, it seems so obvious that coming from Cedar Street is much preferable for many reasons. Uh, and I hear a lot about Eversource which I think is a public utility, and, but I haven't heard any information that would indicate that they couldn't possibly approve it. I guess they haven't approved Cedar Street, that's for sure, but I have a notion that they weren't asked about Cedar Street, or I saw one thing that indicated that uh, Eversource sent an email back to uh, TJA and uh, said, please tell us how you want to proceed, whether you want to go ahead with the uh, present plan, which was the Wilson Street one, or whether you might want to go to Cedar. And I think that uh, the applicant stayed with the Wilson Street. But what it indicates to me was it's still an open issue. It might cost some more money, I, I expect. It may cause some delay. But for the, those of us who live right on Wilson Street, uh, I think you can monetize certain things, but you can't quite monetize feelings. So uh, I think that there ought to be more consideration given to that. I thank you. I, I uh, agree with you. I made that very clear point from my perspective, too. Um, it doesn't mean that that's the way the board votes, but I, I agree with you. And I want to thank Chris. I raised an issue with him, and he reacted it in his, reacted in his usual courteous way. So thank, thank you. you. Can I just ask a question for Mr. Cutter? Sure. Uh, if I can hear you. Sure. So, I mean, I think to some degree that the developer has gone to great lengths to try and, and offer some additional contingencies where they can, in particular with the screening. And I'm just wondering if you have, a, a, if you had a preference of uh, improved screening or if you had a preference of where that electrical connection, um, where your preference might lie. If you had to choose one or the other. 
well, that's not fair. <laughs> uh, Which one is more I important to you? I can't that. quite answer that because there are, I come here and I think about my own interests and also those of the people in the street. And the people who are across the street might have more concern of what's right on Wilson Street and I might worry about what I'm going to see when I look out the back window. So I can't answer that question. I think that the going to Cedar Street and having good screening are not inconsistent with each other, whereas going to Wilson Street but not addressing other things perhaps or, or doing good screening but not addressing the basic issue of where it is, uh, where the connection is, doesn't seem to work for me. So I probably haven't helped you at all because I don't have any answer for that. It's, it's all important. The, if my wife were still here, she had to leave because it's pretty warm. Uh, she would say that there's no business for putting a commercial operation in the middle of a single family residential area on a scenic road. That's a very simplistic approach. That's mine too. 55 years we're working on right now. So she's, but she's convinced me the basics like that maybe count more than the precise what are we doing here and what are we doing there. I'll try to be quiet for a while. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Cutter. Okay. Well, well said. Anybody else? Because we do need to continue. So where would the next available reasonable spot be? So. September 17th meeting is full. Hold on one second. Is this on this, sir? Yeah, yeah it Introduce is. yourself, please. So I'm Tim Boto. I'm actually the developer. Um, so I, uh, I thought I'd provide some additional clarification on the interconnection. Since so, uh, so yes, are you available at the when we continue it? Because we are way out of time. Sure. Because I, I think that that's going to be important. Okay. All right, and it deserves a, bit of, a full conversation. Okay. Um, so we have a pretty full meeting on September 17th. Um, would you like me to read out what we have so far? Sure. 7.45, we have uh, 90 Hayden Road, the high school site plan. 8.15, we have um, Saddle Hill Road, scenic road permits. 8.35, we have Buckland and Leonard Street, the stormwater management and the roadway petition. 9 o'clock, we have the Wilson Street Legacy Farms drainage. We have that for half an hour. And then 9.30, we have the um, element 5255 Wilson Street. So um, I would... I would entertain putting them at 835 with the Buckland and Leonard that just doesn't seem to want to <laughs> launch itself. I However, think, that leaves us with 20. No. Go ahead. I, have, I think they, they seem very prepared to come, Buckland and Leonard. Do you want to say Everything has or did you memorize it? I didn't really memorize it, but thank you. <laughs> um, I also um, uh, would like to not constrain your continuation to a time frame that can't conclude it for you. Um, what's the next meeting? October 1st. We have one meeting in September. We have quite the leisurely yeah. schedule going on. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so um, is it your preference to have more time? Go ahead. If I just may move it along, if the board's position is to hire an expert, I'd ask that you vote on that now. If you need a vote. Oh, we, I think we have agreed to that. We don't need a vote, and we will. Uh, so that'll happen I, before the meeting. What I was hoping to do is have those that input before the next your next meeting. I'm hoping that you can conclude at the next hearing. I feel like 8:35. We have a a, um, a public hearing there already um, that we understand is probably going to come forward. So I feel like the better bet is actually October to be fully prepared so that we can finish this in enough time we're, we're asking to, for the soonest available date okay and we do have an item tentatively for october 1st oh and that, at that what just one additional at what time um it hasn't had been assigned so. Oh, so, so let's assign this hearing the first time on october 1st yep <coughs> so i'll entertain a motion for <clears throat> seven forty-five on october 1st so moved 
Uh, any questions? Any My comments? My question would be, how much time are we allotting for that? An hour? We haven't. Do you, do you, do you have a proposal? I, have a, I propose that we do allow a full hour. No, I'm fine with that. Is everybody yes. okay with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. So thank you for that. Um, we do so, have to extend the deadline for the uh, stormwater management permit. And so what would the appropriate extension be to request for that? I would say, um, I just need to look at my calendar. Mm -hmm. You weren't giving it to me, you were just loaning it to me. You can have it, I can get it. We have Columbus Day off, right? We have Columbus Day off. So I'd say uh, Tuesday the 9th for the stormwater management permit. To decision. extend it. So that's a request to the applicant to extend the decision to that date. We'll meet on October 1st. Is that amenable? So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? There's two abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Doing an agenda check. Uh, are the Whisperwood, uh, Whisperway after? Yeah. So, um, I'm going to suggest that we request that Whisper Way wait until after the Design Review Board and the Zoning Advisory Committee discussion, if they're amenable. So we can let I think people the committee go appointments home. Would be quick and I think What's that? A, I think the committee appointments could be fairly quick. That, that would be yes, idea. yes. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to continue the already continued public hearing for Whisper Way till the conclusion of the committee appointments. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Sorry. Were you about to oppose? <laughs> nice, nice try, but we, we celebrate the intent of that. I'm sorry. Um, so the design review board um, appointments um, are non-controversial. The members that are currently serving would like to continue to serve, and there have been no additional um, applicants. Them, uh, even oh, if we, I don't okay. know. For design review board, yes, there's an alternate position. So. An alternate position still open, so that's so worth saying. That next time. Yeah, mm -hmm. to the public. So, um, yes. So, would anybody like to make a motion to uh, reappoint the existing members? I would be happy before to. Before we vote, uh, yeah. I think one member's here. If you uh, one potential members here, if you'd like to make a talk. For design review Andrew board. Not for design, design review, review board. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I would make a motion to reappoint Ellen Stoddard, Jeanette Thompson, Rhea McNamara, and Jeff Doherty to the Design Review Board. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, and then just a reminder to the public that there is one spot still open on the Design Review Board for an alternate. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, the Zoning Advisory Committee. Mary. So are there any Zoning Advisory Committee volunteers here? Oh, yes, there are a couple applicants. One, two, three, I see. Okay, great. Um, I was wondering if you've all picked up this handout regarding the Zoning Advisory Committee. They're on the chair over there. Oh, okay. I want to thank did you put this here to me? Yes. This is very, very uh, well organized and clear. Um, uh -huh, I forgot. But I'll I'm sorry I gave you so little time to respond. <laughs> uh, Girl, should we invite I them couldn't to the read table the insides of it. All. Yeah, why don't we have the applicants <laughs> come right up if you don't mind? We've got three chairs up here. Come on up here and join us. Well, I wasn't showing up for some reason. But no, it's very clear, straightforward. It's good. And you're doing enough to do it. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. 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 I
Do you have the homework? So, I, <laughs> perhaps we could, you could just introduce yourselves and then Mary's going to kick us off. Uh, Ron Coisey, I'm applying to be the Chamber of Commerce representative on the Sonic Advisory Committee. Live at 25 Chamber Street. Street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elise Mihailowski and I'm applying to be an associate member on the zoning committee, and I live at 19 Walcott Street. Hi, my name is Madhu Chandrasekhar. I live in 18 Rocky Woods Road, and I'm applying to be a, an associate member in zoning advisory committee. Welcome. Okay, so I put together this handout with help from everyone else. Uh, we had a long discussion at our July meeting about some changes to the Zoning Advisory Committee this year. And so I wanted to make sure that you were aware of the changes that we've voted on um, before you, you know, commit yourself to <laughs> put your life on the line for us. <laughs> um, so um, some of the things that we voted on um, were to have the Zoning Advisory Committee um, have year-round meetings. So in, in practice, um, it's always been a one-year appointment in the past, but, uh, but um, the committee only met from September through January or February. Um, and after that, it was, you know, uh, recommendations were turned over to other boards to get them ready for annual town meeting. Um, but what we would like to have happen this year is, and, and subsequent years, is that the um, the people commit to meeting year round, and then after some recommendations have gone forward to the planning board for, say, 2019 annual town meeting, you'd start to discuss new things for the next year. So um, that's one change. Um, one uh, the other is um, five at large members with two year terms, and five up to five associate members for one year terms. Um, then there would be, of course, the four liaison members appointed from the other town committees and the chamber. Um, so um, associate members would be non-voting members. Um, and um, we, we did this in order to allow for people who had less experience with town government um, to kind of get a, a flavor for it. <laughs> um, and of course, because we were, wanted to do two-year terms for at large members, um, those, um, you know, for this first year, we'd, we'd appoint a few for one year and a few for two year. I can't remember what the division was right offhand. Is it three? Three for two years and two for two, one year. So it goes on a rotation. So there's continuity. That's the whole idea. Okay? So um, with that in mind, and you know, so you understand this very well. I just wanted to make sure that associate member for one year is what the two of you have in mind, and that's consistent with how you understood it. Yes. Okay. Good. And I don't think we need to speak to anything else on here. It's just a few other little bits of information. Um, so. so okay. Structurally. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, there's five. Uh, candidates for more than five positions right now, correct? Yes. There, I'm sorry, there's three candidates? There's, uh, there's some that are not here today. Oh, yes. that's right. Rhea Thank you. McNamara? Thank you. Yeah. And who, who else? And Ted Barker. Ted Barker. Ted. That's right, okay. I'm assuming Ted Barker might be represented from the Con Con? Yes. Yes. Can I just say from a process point or ask, Georgia, you can, uh, the appointments from the boards are not necessarily something that we approve. We accept the appointments of the boards and committees. Um, so I would recommend that um, Ted and Ron are. Well, we always vote to approve forward. them uh, we, in a historically. As a matter of course. Yeah. Really? That's an interesting twist because I wouldn't necessarily see that. But that's fine. Totally fine. I don't think that we'd ever have any issue with another board or committee's recommendation to us. Um, okay, go ahead. I interrupted you, and I'm sorry, Frank. Oh, no, it's all good. It's all conversation. Uh, so the three people here, two people that are not here, one being Ted Barkerhook, who was appointed from uh, CONCOM, uh, one who's here, Ron, is appointed from the um, Chamber. Chamber of Commerce. 
Uh, and then the two uh, other candidates here are looking for associate membership. And then Rhea would be a full membership. Uh, um, so where do we get the other members this go around? Or do we? So I thought that uh, that's a, it's a, a great question. Um, I would like to take advantage of the fact that you folks are here so that you can introduce yourself to the public and to us. Um, and then I think um, we know that the ZBA is going to be sending somebody after this, the date of this meeting because they didn't meet before this meeting. Mm -hmm. The planning board has to decide amongst itself who our recommendation is for the, the um, zoning board. But I think necessarily, and, and uh, you know, if anybody has a better idea, we'll have to leave the applicant. We'll have to reinitiate an application period and encourage uh, more applicants. Um, so. Nice. Yes. Procedural question. If we were to yeah. appoint the two who applied to be associates, they could be voting members until we get a full more. That's floor. correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Not so, to scare anyone. It's, it's good no, to have no, new it's blood. Just a, it's, it's, <laughs> the, it's the process <laughs> question, and, um, and it's, a, it's an important question because we don't have as many people at necessarily as we hoped to fill the board, but we're very happy to have the people that we do have here. We have an um, excellent structure, and we can fill it in as we go. Yes. So, um, so I would like to take the opportunity to hear from each of you, and it will help if the microphone is near you when you introduce yourself, um, and uh, a little bit about why you'd be interested in serving on the zoning advisory committee. And then it's fine in the middle. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Madhu. Uh, I moved to Hopkinton in 2012. Uh, by profession, I'm a software engineer. And um, I have a five-year-old daughter who's starting in Marathon this year. I always wanted to be involved more in the town. And I wanted to help in any way as possible because it takes, the more and more I learn about town government and everything, it's like it takes the town people to keep things running properly. So I, I've always wanted to be a part of some way, in some way, and uh, because I'm new, I also wanted to start by learning, and that's why when I saw the opening for, I heard about the zoning board uh, openings, and I saw the associate member, I was like, maybe it's, it's going to be a good starting point for me to learn and to contribute at the same time, and get the flow, get understand what it takes to keep everything going. So, well, thank you. Welcome. Great, Elise. Hi, Elise Mihailovsky. Um, I moved to Hopkinton about a year ago and before that we lived in Massachusetts for about a year and a half but we moved up from Miami Florida and I was very involved in um, the well my parents lived in a town as part of Miami it's kind of confusing but I was very involved with the town and city government and um, I kind of joke that I'm a professional volunteer <laughs> um, because <You're> welcome. <laughs> I just kind of throw myself into positions all the time um, and I <laughs> I just really like the the town and the community feel since I've moved to Hopkinton and I wanted to be able to be in a position where I could make be making decisions and help change and steer it towards a positive future thank you Ron. Um, I've been in Huntington since 1989 and involved with the chamber for most of that time. Uh, the chamber is the economic development arm for the town of Hockington. And I feel very passionate that economic development and economic diversity can go hand in hand. Uh, being part of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, I come to this position with a bias toward growth in commercial development. And I believe that commercial development can help to provide tax revenue to the town to create a little bit more diversity than what we're seeing in the residential side of, of the town at this point. But that's part of the reason that I'm, I'm anxious to be part of this board. Okay. So does anybody on the board have questions? We're gonna, we have decided early on that we would like to ask everybody the same questions if we ask questions. So everybody will have an opportunity to to answer the same the same questions. I have no questions. I have no questions. I think I spoke enough. No questions from me. <laughs> no. Use it or lose it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, my only question is, uh, I think Zach meets 
twice a month, approximately. approximately. Typically, yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody's. But that was the old schedule where there was concentrated time. And that's why I kind of saw me dance a little bit, right? So typically, it's been twice a month for like six months. Where now we're going to have a full year, and there may be some opportunity where it's not. And my question, or, or really as a comment, is your willingness or commitment for that full year schedule to, to make it because I think having involvement throughout the course is really important. So. No issues? No it wasn't issues. really a question. It wasn't no. a question. It was more of a little, it was, it was a little it, statement, a little. It was, it was yeah. because I think in the past, yep. um, and I speak, I've been on um, Zach um, years ago with, with Carol, um, Keeping a full board throughout the course of the year is, is important. I just want to make sure that people are committed to it. Thank you, Tom. I have no questions. Thanks for your volunteering, I should say. <laughs> no questions. Yes, I had the same message. Thank you for volunteering. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I agree. I'm happy that you guys all volunteered. <laughs> Look at that. This is a very challenging position. Did, did you want to um, ask a question? Great to get um, if you were to ask something, if you were to find a question that you would like us to pose from our position <coughs> in the planning board, what would that question be? If you were to create um, a scenario that the planning board wanted to try to study, what would you like to study in Hopkinton? Personally, uh, from, from the town meetings that I've attended and the e-hops and all that stuff, but, uh, one thing I fail to, I struggle to understand is that uh, we ha our taxes are increasing and we've been told that the um, residential taxes, to keep the residential taxes down, you have to work on improving the commercial tax. But the, it seems like there is, there's always like the commercial development cannot fit in the model that we have for the city, so for the town, so that seems like, like a clash. Like, that, uh, that's a question I always struggle with. Every meeting I try to get the answer. Like, I know we want to stay mostly residential, but to bring down the tax, it needs to be more commercial development as well in addition. So how do we balance that? And that is a question that I'd like to get planning boards up. Okay, thank you. Um, that's a tough one for me because I've only been here for about a year. And I have a... 11 month old baby so for most of that year I've been inside my house <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I noticed about this town that was sort of the first thing that stuck out to me was the development on Main Street and I think there's a lot of potential there and I think it would be nice to see I don't know shops restaurants whatever but um, I'd have to know more about how the commercial real estate works with the town before I could really <coughs> propose something. The question that I would pose has to do with uh, simplifying the process of coordinating all the different boards and committees and processes that different applicants have to go through to get from the beginning to the end. It's a streamlining question. Well, something, call it what you want, but communicating the process, coordinating the process, and trying to get things through uh, more expeditiously. Thank you very much. That was great. I think that is something we have to put in, in a paragraph or in a, a few pages. I think that's a great idea. All three unique answers. Very well yeah. Done. yeah. Thank you. Um, can Yes. The question that you would ask. Um, parking is always an issue with downtown, so that's something to consider when yeah. when you work through that hole and, and solve that problem. Good to know. And I don't know if you've noticed, but down closer to 495, there's a lot of commercial development down there as well. Anything? Motion? Um, can I just ask, Claire? It's three two year. At large spots and two one year. At, what did we do? Re Five two years. Yes. I'm sorry. We applied for a one year. Okay, but how, what did we have for spots? Oh, the start. Oh yes, we have five at large members, 
And this year we were going to um, appoint three for two year, okay. two for one year, and then the associate members are for one year. Okay. That's what I thought. Are, are any of the applicants for the associate positions interested in a full voting position? I wouldn't mind. Okay. Okay. Great. Just want to confirm before we How do you feel about two years versus <laughs> one year? <laughs> There's a learning curve. I mean, I, so one of the things that we thought about was that there's there's an opportunity, um, and also so you know, as you jump in on a, a committee that is fairly new and I think very substantive, you are not out there on your own. We have committed as a planning board to do a better job um, providing direction, but there is probably most importantly there's professional staff that guides um, the work of the zoning advisory committee as well as the planning board. Um, so there will be guidance. So are you a, a willing to be a regular member? I, I am willing to, just that I was, I, again, there's always that fear of like, I, yeah. I, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Like, it's going to be, it's gonna be great. <laughs> um, and would you be willing to um, commit to two years? Yes. Okay. And how about you? Yeah. Oh, look at that. We'll lead them right into that. <laughs> I like it. How do you guys feel about 20 years? Oh. <laughs> yeah, while we're at it, you know, while we're at it. Um, no, I have to tell you, I, I started on the Zoning Advisory Committee last year, and now I'm here. <laughs> so, yeah, don't let that scare you, pass. though. <laughs> okay. How do you say your name in the abbreviated form? Madhu. Madhu. M-A-D-H-U. Okay. Uh, my full name is very long, but I just... I'm looking at it right now, and I'm <laughs> not going to try that. Um, so before we do the motion, do we want to uh, select the willing victim? It's like the Hunger Games on the planning board. <laughs> is anybody willing to offer themselves as tribute to this ad? <laughs> No. Oh, you mean for the planning board yes. liaison? Yeah. Um, yes, I will vote. Oh, yeah. yes! Second. Is anybody? Does anybody want to fight her for it? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Mary. That's awesome. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't mind at all if other people wanted to join the, the Zach in addition. Well, I'm looking forward to being on HTM so I can watch. <laughs> yes. um, it's it's. Uh, it, it's not a terrible invitation, which I contemplated myself, because um, you know we're embarking on um, a slightly different format, and we're committed to a slightly different process. Um, and for example, Gary was on it before, not you know, not, yeah. and Dave doesn't have a liaison assignment. He might. I you be had one special one for me. Yes, but it isn't fully formulated yet. So would you take an associate year? Let me get back to you on that. Okay. Fair enough. So, uh, playing board members, Carol's been on the ZAC before? If, if, if no other citizen volunteers step up, I'd be happy to serve right. on ZAC. So we have some, we have some potential volunteers, so that would be, I think that, that would be meaningful and great. So we will revisit that when we come back. So I have um, Ted Barker Hook from the CONCOM, Ron Foisey from the Chamber of Commerce, Mary from the Planning Board, Elise and Madhu for two year slots and Rhea for a one year slot. What's some of your two years? She actually uh, said one year on her application or her email. Yeah. It was in Okay, I thought she wasn't aware of the two years, so I <coughs> No, she specifically said one year. All right. Is anybody willing to make that motion? I make that motion. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. We have another couple. I have my second job. Exactly. During the week. Uh, I didn't. Oh, are you a coach? Hockey official. Yes. Okay. Georgia. All right. So Excuse contemplated me. Um, through the yeah. chair. Um, yep. Georgia, do you normally contact um, the new uh, newly appointed members to teach them about like what they need to do for swearing in and stuff like that? For what? Swearing what? in. At the town to board. Contact. Uh, so usually, in my experience, since the other members that we voted in, it was the um, administrative assistant. But I'll make sure okay. all of them. Are okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well past our deadline here. I feel like we need coffee. We're gonna need something. Um, Just a clarification. <laughs> Actually, we need air conditioning. Yes. We, 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 the openings we have are now two openings for at-large members. A two-year opening and a one-year opening, and five potential associate members. 
and the ZBA will right. have so a we recommendation. Can advertise that between now and next meeting. Maybe? Yeah, it would actually be great if we re-advertise it. Thank you, Amy. Okay, so we are now. Um, uh, thank everybody for their patience. We are now ready to uh, re to reconsider the public hearing for Whisper Way. We continued it to after the discussion of the committee appointments, so we're all good. But we need to open Chamberlain Whalen. What's that? Do we need to open Chamberlain? Oh, Wayland? thank you. It's not a hearing. Yes, Oh, yeah, very well played. Yes, good Lord. Um, that's not a public hearing, though, right? Okay, no. Right, awesome. But I do appreciate it. It's been a little confusing tonight, so. Welcome, and thank you for your patience. I'm sorry this is so late, but we had a discussion at the beginning of the meeting that hung us up, and I'm sure the nations will appreciate that we resolved that. If you could kindly introduce yourselves. My name is Dan Hazen. I'm with Garrier and Halnon. I'm representing 20th Century Homes. Uh, we're here to discuss Whisper Way. Um, I'm just going to have everybody introduce themselves and then I'll let you oh, jump okay. in. Good evening, Chris Nation. Uh, Elizabeth Minini from Garrier and Halnon. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, sir. All right. Uh, Whisper Way, it was. Uh, it's a 24 lot subdivision. It come before you for a preliminary um, and a special permit was issued back in March 2018. It's a 47.2 acre lot. There's four existing houses on it currently. Uh, there's one on Wood Street that was built in around in the 50s. And then three houses going up Whisper Way, um, built in the 90s. Whisper Way right now is a private way it's about 900 feet long, it's gravel, it's very steep, uh, it's in disrepair. Uh, at the end, it's a parking area, there are six cars for the town forest and for walking trails. Um, be getting access off of Wood Street, which is a state highway, it's uh, Route 135. Uh, it's posted at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> Yes, I drive every day. A notice of intent has been filed for this by Goddard Consulting. While they were throughout the process of filing that notice of intent, there's an existing vernal pool that runs through the front of the site. They also found two additional vernal pools, one here and one up in this area. So from the original preliminary design that we had submitted, we needed to reconfigure a lot here that was in this area uh, to get it outside of the vernal pool buffer. In order to do that, we had to shift this road up a little bit to be able to get in the, to relocate that lot over in this area. Um, we're proposing a 3,500 foot road paved 22 feet wide, <coughs> curbs, Cape Cod curbs on both sides. Um, there'll be one sidewalk running along the inside of the subdivision. And one thing I'd like to discuss a little bit later is the connection from this entrance to the additional one to the existing Whisper Way. Um, the subdivision will be serviced by a private sewer system, septic system. It's an alternative technology oak wood systems that's been going through the process of being approved through the Board of Health, through Clearwater Environmental, and uh, Liz Dupree's been dealing with Brian Besso on that. There's uh, basically all the sewer in the site will run by gravity. Down there's a cross country sewer line that runs through here. There's two 10,000 gallon tanks and a 5,000 gallon pump chamber, which pumps sewage up to here, which is then uh, infiltrated into the ground per Title V. This, uh, you have a formal process in front of the Board of Health because of the design of this, is that correct? So do you have hearings in front of the Board of Health? Okay. Yes. Um, 
The site will be serviced by public water, and water in Wood Street, proposing to tie in and loop it throughout the subdivision and reconnect it with fire hydrants every 500 feet. Uh, minimum lot size in the subdivision is 30,000 square feet. It's bisected by a zone line, residence B on this side, agricultural on this. Uh, through the special permit, the lot size is 30,000. Um, back to the road, it was 22 feet of pavement. The right of way is 40 feet, what we're proposing. So there'll be a grass strip between the sidewalk and the, uh, the road. Drainage design, we use two design points. There's a 36 inch reinforced concrete pipe that runs under 495 and a 48 inch that runs under 495 that runs down to Indian Brook uh, through various wetlands. Through conservation, we do have some wetland fill in this area. Right now, the existing Whisper Way is not on the applicant's property. It's actually off a little bit. What we're proposing to do is to bring the right of way or the right of way and the gravel. The right of way is on the property. The gravel driveway is off the property right now. We're proposing to bring the roadway onto, which is going to require filling in this area. There's an existing uh, eight-inch PVC pipe that runs under the gravel driveway here that we're going to require a little filling here, retaining wall on both sides to minimize impacts, and then wetland fill around this area at the, uh, the existing, there is a crossing there, it's um, looks like an old farmer's crossing, flat stones laid down across a, uh, there's a 12 inch duckle iron pipe that runs from here, at some point somebody had dammed that up, left the pipe as a relief, and then placed the flat stones over it to provide access to the back land. I'm not sure if it's for forestry or for skitters, that type of thing. We're proposing to span that crossing with um, either reinforced concrete or aluminum um, span with retaining walls and wing walls, again, to try to minimize the impact. run the water through, we'd have to run the water off the side underneath the wetland to be a temporary impact. Um, we're proposing two parking areas for horse trailers, 40 foot by 10 foot wide, gravel parking areas. Uh, also proposing to re-gravel this area, the parking area. We'd leave the, we'd place the Cape Cod berm down the side of the road keep the water on the road so it wouldn't go across there to scour the, uh, the existing grout or the proposed gravel and then regrade that so that Cape Cod berms really low, people can drive right over that to be able to get into the area without damaging the, uh, the curb. Um, two of the existing houses are going to stay. This one and one at the top of the hill. The one on Wood Street's going to be demolished, as well as this one. Uh, the, I believe that's one, that would be three. Whistle away, those will be torn down. Um, as we submitted, we had 26.24 acres of open space, which is 55%. Through some reconfiguration that we're working on through um, Beta's review letter, we had to change some of the right away. That number might change a little bit, but it uh, will still be over the 50% required. We are asking for some waivers. Uh, one of the waivers is providing cross sections of the street at 50 foot intervals. Um, basically, it would just have 70 cross sections of the road on various sheets. Uh, I believe some engineers have asked for that waiver in the past. 
The next waiver we're asking for is um, a waiver providing the location of all the street trees throughout the subdivision. I have changed the note on the detail sheet for the review letter stating that there will be street trees placed every 40 feet where they're not able to be maintained and I believe we're varying between Linden and Pin Oaks. Um, the next waiver is for street lights. Um, from what I've heard, street lights have been uh, either not required or they've been being turned off around town to some degree, uh, minimize light pollution on a street light. <coughs> you, you don't want any, right? Is that right? No, no street lights. <coughs> uh, next waiver would be disturbance to natural topography. At the two wetland crossings, we will need more than the eight feet of fill uh, just to maintain grit, to be able to get the uh, Grade coming off of Wood Street and going up the hill, as well as span this, we're going to need more than the eight feet. Um, everywhere else, we were able to keep the road at or pretty close to grade. Another waiver would be the service to natural topography of grades greater than 25%. There are some areas out here that are steep, uh, greater than 25%. Uh, we've tried to minimize that by bringing the road up to this area. Uh, a lot of the steep is at this section. Uh, there are a few other areas to the route, but that being the horseshoe right here, being the, the major part. How, how steep? Not, sorry, I shouldn't interrupt you about it. Uh, 30, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I can look and get back to you on that. And then the last waiver would be, uh, we have been granted a waiver for uh, less than 100 feet for a separation between the, uh, for the open space and the lots. One area that we had to make a little bit more narrow would be right in this area due to the fact that in order to get the septic system approved um, clear water had to show to the board of health that a conventional system could fit within on the lot within its own lot without needing any easements or grading onto the open space if for whatever reason they needed to build a conventional system at a later date um, we don't anticipate that these systems have been put in use around the state in New England and they've been uh, working success successfully so far. Uh, one of the issues or one of the things that I'd like to discuss is the sidewalk connection along Wood Street. That being with the vertical pool and the steep grades off the back side of the uh, guardrail, in order to do this, what we would need to do is move the sidewalk out into the road. I can move the guardrail back a little bit, but if I go too much further, we're going to start intruding into the vernal pool and that, those buffers. Um, basically, what we would propose is one foot off the back of the white line using a tall asphalt berm similar to the ones that are along West Main Street um, and then being able to put a five foot sidewalk without having to relocate utility poles and without having to fill any wetlands or any more impact to the, uh, the burn pool or the wetlands. Um, something I'm going to talk to Beta and I'm assuming you'd want me to speak to the DBW about that as well. Makes sense. Um, the stormwater was designed for the 2 and the 10 um, using the extreme pre precipitation numbers. 
for the hundred year storm, the stormwater was designed for what we had historically used for the hundred year storm, looking at the, um, the increase of the two inches for the hundred year storm, where <coughs> the road drainage and the piping and everything associated with it is sized for a 25 year storm. We don't feel that we would be able to get the water from the road to the detention basins during a hundred year <coughs> storm. Catch basins are not made to handle that great of a flow. Um, by making, by using this, using those rainfall amounts, what it does is we need to clear more trees, do more earthwork, make these basins a lot bigger. Um, we can make them work with that rainfall amount, but again, that's. Um, it would just be more intrusive to the project. It would be more cuts, fills, trees clearing, things like that. So that's something that I'm gonna discuss with Beta. Um, I'd like to set up a meeting this week with, to go over <coughs> all that with, okay. uh, so. We, we are way behind schedule, so I'm going to hear from Beta initially. I know a lot of open comments, but if you wanted to, um, you were talking to with the stormwater? Oh, yeah, the Sorry. Uh, no. <coughs> no. Do you mind if I stand? I do not. Okay. Um, so for the record, Phil Paradis with Beta Group, we've uh, been tasked with reviewing this project for, for you folks as well as uh, conservation. Um, with me today is Jill Bokoff, who's been helping me with that review. Uh, she'll be continuing on that. So, uh, as you recall from our uh, discussion for the uh, open space permit, um, the site is very challenging. Uh, it's got a lot of topography issues. Uh, it's got wetland issues. It's got uh, um, soils, salt, you know, rock issues, and and, and such. Uh, they're also having to. A, a dense development with a, uh, a septic system, a special septic system. So they got a lot of a lot of things going on here at once, and then also some amenities to connect with the open space adjacent to it and, and such. Um, we did find that there was quite a bit of work that needs to be done uh, on the plans. Um, the because of the topography, we have. Uh, several sections of 8% grade or, or close to that. Um, we would ask that the developer do a little bit, do something, uh, what we've asked for on, on similar projects like this is to steepen the cross slopes to a 3% to get the water off as opposed to, off to the side as opposed to straight down the hill and provide uh, double great catch basins and locations. Um, so that will help get the water in the basins. Uh, we'll have to look at uh, the, the comment about the 100 year storm relative to if it doesn't get in the basins, where's it going? Um, and, 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 and resolve that. We did, we did find some con conflicting information relative to soil testing that we'll have to iron out um, and get to the bottom of. Um, and then this other engineering issues relative to um, just, just, you know, f completing the design. Um, so, I don't know if there's any questions, but. Uh, no, I appreciate, I don't think that we have time for questions. I appreciate that, Phil, but um, just to give the public, the applicant, everybody, the, the initial overview, I do appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Um, and from our planner. I skipped right over you. I know you. It's fine, but, um, no, I did want to note that, um, we did get revised plans in right before the meeting, so the plans that are in the packet um, are not the most up-to-date. Uh, they were not presented tonight because they weren't submitted in time, but I have a feeling the next time we see you, there's going to be a whole other revised set. That was really the only comment. Okay. Is there anybody from the public who came to speak to this? I don't think so. Okay. Um, 
So, uh, the, um, does, I think we're going to have to continue it at this point. Um, does, should we schedule the site walk, though, first? Does anybody have any we thoughts? Did, we did one previously. We, need to we wait did, yes. yeah. But we do have new members. And then, and then we talked about we should always schedule a site walk for anybody who wants to go. So, okay. um, yeah. <laughs> um, person come with us on that sidewalk? If they want to. If, can we send an invitation? You can, you can sure ask. You can bring any friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure it's not a majority of them. Yeah. Well, it's it's a sidewalk anyway, so it's not a public hearing in any, but yeah, you wouldn't want a majority of the con come. Okay. Um, so does anybody, well, I should ask the applicant, when, when are some Saturdays that seem, <coughs> this coming Saturday would not be a good choice? <laughs> We very often do it at 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Um, so this coming Saturday is what day? It's uh, the first. first? Labor day. Right. So would the 8th be amenable? How about for planning board members, the 8th of, sep of September? Oh, wow. I know. It's at 9 o'clock and the last time we met at the existing parking area um, up by the public. Yeah. All right. Um, so then, where are we going to continue it to? So we do have availability October first. First. Um, at. So we have Wilson Street Solar at seven forty-five, and then next in line was um, the LNG Access Road. It's a second stormwater management permit, separate from the LNG facility. So this is its own hearing, its own application, um, and they. Because of the full meeting in September, they will be October 1st is next in line. So I am going to propose 845 for um, the Whisper Way subdivision. Okay. Um, uh, and um, I would say at least 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so October 1st. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue this public hearing to October. Yeah the chair. I did yep. have one comment. Um, one of the waivers they're requesting is for the um, no street lights within the property. I just wondered if we could get comment from the police chief on safety of not having the street lights. I'm okay with it as long as it's not a safety issue. But maybe before next time. I think they don't have. Every single subdivision not have yeah. Street yeah. I think. Yeah. I, th I mean, I think we're going to have plenty of time to get that. But okay. um, I actually am thrilled at the prospect of <laughs> no street lights. But. If we can certainly reach out and make sure we get that. Um, so October 1st at, what did I say, 8.45 to 9.30. So we have, we have a very complicated uh, hearing coming up that starts next, um, next meeting. And this second proposal is a, is a companion piece to that very complicated Thing. So I'd like to have at least a half hour for them to introduce their proposal, if that's amenable to the board. So I'm, I'm proposing in 45 minutes next time, starting at 8.45. Can I have a motion? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any we also need, oh, oh, sorry, jumped in there. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Mm -hmm. We also what? I need to extend the decision deadline for Whisper Way. Right now we have it at um, September 27th. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Um, so what what works for the professional staff? October 1st. What's our second meeting after October 1st, just in case? 15, I think. So I would say uh, we can do October 23rd. The decision. Is that amenable? Does that work? Thank you. Um, that does give us a second meeting in October. Perfect. Thank you if we need it. Um, okay. So we'll see you folks again on the 1st. We'd like to permission to, to work with the Please. Engineers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that that makes a great deal of sense to uh, shorten the timeline if you can. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
I have, a, I have an interjection about the site walk at, um, for Whisper Way. Um, to extend it to this, the, the Wilson Street Solar Project as well, could it be possible, but we have to ask permission, obviously, to, to walk the uh, site where the ancient, where the, so, the so-called ancient pieces, pieces are, artifacts are? So we can't entertain that now because oh, okay. that discussion is closed. Okay. So if that is something that is desperately important to you when we see them next, you'll have to bring that up next. Okay. Um, just ask a question from you just said before that. Yeah. So you said that gives us a second meeting in October? It, we have two meetings in October. The extension of the decision date yeah. gave us a second meeting if we needed it for the Whisper Way in order to get the decision into so when you pick the extension, is that a Monday? I mean, I'm just trying to follow. Well, usually the decision I usually do a week after the. No, potential. so it'll be the first and the fifteenth. Okay. So she gives herself a little bit of time after the fifteenth in order to actually write okay. the decision okay. and get it approved. Got if it. we had to go to the fifteenth. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, don't be coughing in my direction. <laughs> I finally, I finally stopped coughing. Oh. Is me? <laughs> Fran, we going to change need to change location because you're yeah. coughing here. I like to change the condition because it's hot. Yeah, that's. Uh, All right, they, listen, mother of six, there is no whining or there is. There is. There, it's going to happen, okay? Winter's coming up and summer's fading. And by the way, I'm a, a woman of a certain age, so again, I wouldn't complain if I were you. Um, okay, so we have a Chamberlain. I'm sorry that you are, have waited so long, but please do come forward. How late are we? And I, I don't recommend complaining about the temperature because I've, I've addressed that. We have coordinated the blue colors. We missed all of you. <laughs> yes, welcome it's back. It's been too long. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just oh. a amount of time. It does occur to me that there are two members that probably shouldn't stay sitting at the table. Well, Carol is in a butter, but Gary was not. You're not in a butter? I triple check that a that a butter's less because I didn't believe. No, so I'm just going to recommend to you that you were very. It's your choice, but you were very active in the conversation yeah. and the discussion, and it is also the appearance of a conflict I of agree. interest that we yeah. worry about. I disagree though. It goes by distance. It's his choice. We just we want it always to be strictly yes, defensible and totally and we welcome your comments from the audience as an audience member. Oh, it's it's been on your name. name. <laughs> he wasn't planned. He wasn't in the office time. today. <laughs> okay, um, I'm wildly. Oh, here I got it. Um, if you can go ahead and introduce yourselves and why we're here today. Sure, Kathy Sherry, REC Hopkinton, Paul Mastriani, applicant and owner for the Chamberlain Wayland subdivision. We've submitted for endorsement um, the updates and required documents for the Chamberlain Wayland subdivision that was previously approved as a definitive plan. In addition to that, we've also submitted the pre construction documents that were required per the decision um, and are looking for review and approval of those. Um, our intent is to try to begin construction of the infrastructure and to begin the site work in the next few weeks. So um, that's what we're here seeking tonight. Okay, there is one item, and I don't, because I go back and forth through the materials, I don't remember which one it is that yeah. you, what, that we had asked for before you start, and you would like to not. It, that what? was just the homeowners association. There was a condition in our decision about putting the stormwater maintenance in the homeowners association, and we asked if we could defer that to the start of construction of the first home, when it would make more sense for us to put together an actual homeowners association document. Thank you for the reminder. I knew there was something in there. Yeah, that was the only thing. Um, could you also, I, I don't know if you have a picture or not, can you walk us through what the, um, the, um, Ted Stone. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you knew exactly what I was looking <laughs> yeah. for. Really? She's a mind reader. Uh, we've been referring to it. Well, that was probably the, the one large item. It was, that we a, had yeah, it was open, a big open item, and you were going to work with him after the fact. Exactly. Um, 
I don't, I don't have a picture to bring up, but what we did work out um, is well, we've been calling it the Ted Stone curve. Um, when we left here, <laughs> we were not meeting the requirements as far as the center line radius and turn radius at that curve. Um, and we had originally proposed to take about 10 feet um, within the easement on the, the loop Ted Stone property there. Since that time, we've, um, Elaine, on our behalf, has talked to HALT, and we've been able to basically move the curve over to the town's conservation land. So what we've done, and, and in the plans that were submitted to conservation and that they reviewed and approved, and then what we submitted for endorsement reflects that change. So basically, if you do look at the plans, and I don't know if we can even bring them up there, um, Basically, the Ted Stone property and their stone wall is not touched at all, and we've been able to achieve the 150-foot centerline radius by taking a, about, it's about 1,400 square feet of the conservation land that, um, that was under restriction on the, the right-hand side of the road. Okay, so, and you were able to do that without the state, or... Um, Elaine, because I guess Hopkinton is going through some additional discussions with the state as far as conservation restriction, it's being submitted as part of that. So she has HALT's approval, and then obviously there will be some state approval, but she felt that we could move forward with that. Is that a fair statement, George? Yeah, exactly. So the town's process is really complete, and now it's on to the state for their review, and then it can be recorded. Mm -hmm. And we could, in we could include the changes into the state's portion. Yes. Yeah, it's been so awesome. Yeah, so it, we were very happy with that. I'm sorry. I, um, oh, it's just, it's, it, for me, from my perspective, I'll speak for myself. It's awesome that we're not imposing on the Ted Stone's property um, yes. okay. in that way. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that update. So how do we give up 1,400 14, square feet? Yes. 1,400 square feet, yes. Of conservation land, and, 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 and what does the town get in I don't see how we can do that, but how does what does the town get in return? Emergency vehicle access. I mean, so that was something Halt talked about. They're the ones that would work to amend and craft that language that would go in there. So it was a matter of from from reading the materials, emergency access and turning. Mm -hmm. Goes back to my point. If if it doesn't fit, then I don't see why we're giving up 1,400 square feet of conservation land, which is there for a purpose gets overridden by private concerns. It's a safety concern, right? I mean, it's a safety trade-off. Don't build it if you can't fit it. And we, 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 it seems like after the fact, it's changing yet again. This is like the second or third twist in, in, in the whole process on this project. This I, I, have to, I have to disagree with that. Go ahead. The, what was approved was with the waiver was approved to not meet the center line radius with the design and if we could not get the conservation lander come up with an alternate solution the plan as it states is approved um, so we were able to work with the town to come up with an alternate plan uh, fire and dpw were fairly especially fire was concerned about the curve and they were very vocal about that and and also did not want to take more of the Ted Stone property so this was a compromise so I'm just gonna so uh, I I appreciate your objection and your point um, I just from a process standpoint that piece of the conversation isn't in front of us but we can well, contemplate it, it from, very much I'm is. sorry I didn't board. actually finish my sentence okay, sorry. that's okay um, so we have to keep our perspective and it's it's very fine that you have your objection and it's very fine that you have your opinion um, but we have to make sure that we consider what's in front of us as from, from a decision-making standpoint that's all that was my point in my, my, my point is that um, Elaine and Norman work for the town and we're the elected members of the town that have this responsibility and they work for the Board of Selectmen uh, Elaine partially works for us, Georgia works for Elaine for us, and if there were agreements that were made outside of this board concerning this project that we weren't consulted on or advised of before they happened, then that is something I'm having a, a serious problem with. So just a suggestion, just, if I yeah, may. Yeah. Why don't we ask them to come to the board and just let us know why they did that and how they did it. It's a reasonable request, right? That is to me. That's Thank good. you. Elaine, right? And, or. 
Okay. Does um, do board members have questions about uh, the materials that are in front of us for the endorsement? I have no questions. Frank, do you mind if I start with you? No, sorry. No, that's okay. No, I I heard you, and I was going to skip right over you again. I don't see how this board can endorse anything right now without hearing directly from uh, the principals that were involved in in making this decision on behalf of the town. When we have the responsibility as elected by the town to oversee it, I, I don't see how we can prove anything without speaking to the people who work for us and made these decisions without our knowledge. Okay. I'm keeping that an open discussion, Frank. Thank you. Mary. I have no specific questions. Dan? I pass. Yeah. Dave. So, question that says endorse definitive subdivision plan. Mm -hmm. Didn't we already approve the definitive subdivision plan? Yep, so now the endorsement is really just the next step so okay. it can be recorded and okay. um, start construction. Just double checking. And just a second kind of trivial question because we were just talking about street lights for the previous project. I know you're not going to be building street lights, but I was wondering do you build uh, lampposts for at all? I, mean, I don't know if you include that or not lampposts in the design of the homes, no? No. Okay. Uh, That's fine. I, I mean, was just curious. It's just a curiosity question. We do have street lights in the plan. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Thanks. Amy. Hi. I don't have any comments. Uh, Georgia, I should have started with you again, but, you know, I just threw you in there. Anyway. No, no comments. Um, I just really, my note was about the Homeowners Association documents, making sure if the board is amenable to that, that they um, come back and provide it at a separate time. Okay. So the open discussion item is whether or not um, we need to, oh, the public. I would like to entertain comments from the public. You do have to come forward and introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Carol Burr and I'm at 47 Chamberlain Street. And I just have two comments. One is with regards to the Chamberlain Street improvements. The way I'm understanding your documents is you're doing the on-site work before you do the Chamberlain Street work. Correct. Um, on the site walk with your engineer, he expressed some concern about the um, culvert that goes under Chamberlain mm -hmm. Street at the end and whether or not it could support those vehicles coming in. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, have you actually, considered that? Well, we actually brought our site contract, I guess. Our, our engineer reviewed the construction management plan and the sequence of events, and that did not come up as an issue. I can certainly take it as a follow-up and just confirm that with him, but we did discuss okay. the I just, construction I just sequence sure with that. that. Right. Yes. road doesn't cave in and I'm right. not stuck no. down there. Right. No. <laughs> and my, my other question or comment, and this is totally self-serving, is if you change the radius of that curve going onto Chamberlain Street, mm -hmm. That's going to head vehicle lights right through my bedroom window, I think. So if that's a problem, you'll address that down the road. It's yes. really not. It's really not, though. I mean, well, it's if it is, really we can address it with landscaping and a privacy right. screening right. And, and things we on would, that idea. Right. Are you okay but with it? Yeah, I'm fine with that. But yeah. it, it will not affect that. The way okay. the curve moves. actually going to the right. They're not going anywhere near. We can look at it. It's, I think she's talking about when they're coming out of the right. out of the yes. new development and not, coming up Chamberlain. Yeah. yeah, we've actually the if the way that it mo it's moved over. It's kind of the road is, and that curve looks to be moved away from the Tedstone House, and I believe where your house and driveway is as well. Well, I'm. It it was coming like this before. I'm right here. You need to. Uh, yeah. Let's see. If you look so at 45, sheet 45 and 46, page 402. Oh, God bless you. Sorry, she has that. Page? Page 402. Because Thanks. you're here, right? I'm here. You're what here. What do we do okay, with that? Okay, so this is the road. Okay, if it's, okay it's see anything, where it's, it's, better. it's, it's better, actually. It's coming away. It's a little bit further away from. I, I am fine with it as long as I have your assurance that if it's yes. not fine, you'll address it. Similar way we did for Ted Stone. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I finally found page 402. I'm a little behind the times here. Um, anybody else from the public? Okay. Um, so, um, 
I think that it's a worthwhile point to, but in your best interest as well, to make sure that the, that culvert can sustain the traffic. I'll follow up with that. Yeah. Um, and about um, understanding the agreements and decisions that were made on the curve by other um, boards and professional town officials. Mm -hmm. um, how, what, how does the board feel about pursuing that? Um, it's interesting information. I'm not sure if it's you know germane to the uh, issue at hand here. So we had, I think, as the applicant kind of pointed out. I mean, I mean prior. we this, did this as a courtesy for obviously the Ted Stones. I mean, right. we can we can go forward how it was before, and it was a lot worse. So and again, we're just I looking for an endorsement. The Ted Stones were happy with the resolution. I mean, of course, because we don't touch any, we don't we don't use any of the easement to go anywhere near their property. But again, we obviously have the approvals. You know, before we could do the endorsement with going into their property and taking doing the easement. And we could have the, the uh, fire department not happy with the turn radiuses. We obviously, again, we went above and beyond to do that, to cut, to make the town, to make the Ted Stones, you know, point happy point with what we're doing. Just, uh, yeah. Are you responding to my suggestion? Is that what that was? Responding to your suggestion. Oh, I don't even know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Frank was um, concerned about Elaine and Town's decision, and I suggested that we have them come before. Right, and I left that as an open no, discussion. No, is that what you're talking right now? Yes. Yes. That's, yeah, that's, my, that's, my suggestion was not to make it contingent on this meeting, but as a separate thing. So that's. Agreed. I just want to be clear. I, mean, I, think, I think we're in the same place. Okay. I'd like to address that. Hold on one second, Frank. Okay. I know you have passionate feelings, Georgia. Can you walk us through how that went, or do you know? Did you I don't do know a lot of the it? background, but I, I do suggest the board looking at condition 28, and because that really, obviously, there was a large discussion about the process after the approval and condition 28 is really what we're talking can, about here. Can you can read it? What page number is that? 340? 348. It's pretty long, but I'm happy to read it. Yeah, th that'd be great. Right. The board recognizes that the ab abrupt curve at the end of existing Chamberlain Street presents challenges for vehicles, especially large vehicles such as fire trucks, to navigate the curve within the current roadway. The subdivision plan shows some improvement in this area, but it is limited to the existing right of way, which is a public way. The applicant provided a sketch plan of how the curve should be expanded using, a, using an existing easement on the property at 49 Chamberlain Street. However, additional study and discussion with the property owner and the fire department would be required in order for the solution or a similar solution to go forward. Therefore, in order to alleviate public safety concerns raised during the public hearing, the applicant shall work with the direct abutters and the fire department in an attempt to smooth out, expand the curve's radius to accommodate a wider turning radius, if possible, provided, however, that one, the relocated road shall not extend more than 10 feet into the easement on the property at 49 Chamberlain Street, and two, if the easement is to be used for this purpose, documentation which demonstrates that the easement can be used for a permanent roadway, public way, shall be provided to the board. If the outcome of this effort is to create a curve in the roadway which does not comply with the minimum center line radius required for the streets in sections 8.2 of the subdivision regs, then a waiver is granted by the board for reduced radius. The board grants the waiver with the recognition that the existing roadway does not confirm, conform to the current requirements. The new curve would improve public safety and the area available for a curve improvement is limited by the existing right of way and as any easements that may exist for this purpose. And at the time, um, we didn't actually think that there were options with the conservation right, property. Right. Correct. Right. So, okay, Frank, you wanted to follow up? Yes. First of all, this isn't the Ted Stones versus public safety. They are all for public safety. And the, la the problem we had last time was that you spoke for the Ted Stones when you you said things that they did never that the neighbor said. Um, so, Frank. So we're here now, and what she just read makes sense. Uh, somewhere in someone in the town granted 1,400 square feet of conservation land. I'd like to know how that happened, who approved it, and under whose authority. I don't think that this board can make any decision. I would like to have this information before we make any decision. Um, I think it's very germane to the project. My point being the entire time is that maybe it's too big a project for 
this area where the way the street is and the way the land is. And uh, it's maybe too big for that many houses, and if it should be less houses, this is the time we talk about it. If, if you have to take 1,400 square feet, and how did that happen? I don't know. I'd like to know. Okay, thank you. We don't need to take 1,400 feet. So I'm going to actually <coughs> suggest that you direct your comments this way and okay. him as well. Okay. Um, anybody else want to have anything to add? Um, I'm just going to... I, I am also interested in how it transpired. I'm... I, um, I am not interested in holding up the decision tonight uh, to find out. Um, I think one of the things that this board has done very well is um, support and uh, further decisions of other boards and committees respectfully without you know, understanding that every piece of business doesn't come before us. So I'm only going to say this to you, Frank. Um, that argument didn't carry with the original decision, and I don't think that it's right to try and make it again. Um, but that's my opinion. You get to make your argument, and you did. So I'm going to entertain a motion um, on. Can somebody help me? Because now I don't have it. So in first, front of me. we're going to vote to <laughs> sign the conditional approval agreement. If the board wants to review that before, um, let me find out what number that is in our packet. Second. Um, is there, uh, so we have a motion that's been seconded, and I'm looking for the agenda item here. Um, is there further discussion? On, can you read the first one for me yeah, again? I just have one statement. Not in defense of, uh, not necessarily in defense of entirely Frank's point, but one of the points that I think is significant to us and the adjudication of, of our responsibilities is that is that we we don't make it a precedence to give a, to give away land and i think that especially conservation land and i think that 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 if anything is an important point that frank brought forth that we should have noted in our minutes that there were comments to that fact um that, that respectfully um these are the kinds of things that are important to our town um, when when a lot of development is going on and, and these and these these thick places are are dwindling, um, we, we we see a lot of development, a lot of large development, small development, you know, pocket development, and if we start giving away our land in trade to a contractor, when do we stop? If we're making a precedent in this case for public safety, when do we start to draw the line? And I just want that in the record. So, that, Deb, I appreciate that. Um, this board didn't decide that is the point I was no, making. Oh, okay. Um, but I'm just it, saying that another, we should also be aware. Yes, yes we and should I, be aware. I think that but, we agree that we want to understand how it happened and what, what the agreement was, but it isn't really our decision. Just a quick comment that if it was to allow them to fit in, it would be a different discussion, but they, we had already approved the the headstone right away so they're really not getting anything out of this it's just for the safety for the public and no, also, I agree. Well, hold, That's on, good. hold on we had also approved that even if they didn't do the curve it wasn't necessarily the responsibility to widen that curve for the right. fire department because it was an existing poor curve so I mean I think on two two counts um, but that doesn't mean I don't agree in principle and and passion and right. enthusiasm for conservation and want to understand what happened. I just want to make sure we stay in our lane. That's fine. Yeah. Fair. Analogies almost would be uh, the drainage down Wilson Street, right? It's like it's an issue, but it's not related to the current what's in front of us. It's separate. Right, right. It's what's in front right. of us. Right, exactly. So just to be clear, we have a motion to approve the conditional approval agreement. Is that correct? Yes, and we need to sign. Okay. Before so, we endorse the plan. I, I do have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's really to the fact that um, I think Deb and I, as being new members, were not able to vote on the previous aspect of this plan. So can we vote on this one tonight? Yes, you can still sign and vote and endorse. Okay. Yeah. Brand new piece of business, but thank you for the question. Only if you buy us ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, any uh, further questions on this piece? Um, so I'll, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify nay. by saying nay. And any abstentions? We have two abstentions. 
Well, they're, they're, not on the they're off the, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, how many signatures do you need? Uh, a majority. doesn't matter. You can start with Amy and move it around. That's fine. I'm going to get so Amy uh, worked up to be an there's, there's more. So we can keep going as well while we do this, right, I think? Yeah, Next is voting on endorsing and signing the plan. Jim Harrell, can you first, though, as the chair? Yeah, when, there's no way. So is there, um, is there any discussion on the endorsing this definitive, excuse me, subdivision plan? Yes. For the record, I'm glad that the Tetzos aren't having to lose any property in this, um, which was originally something that they talked about with you, from my understanding, a long time ago. Um, and again, I'd like to understand how the town could approve who and where and when and why approve 1400, uh, approve this transfer of land from conservation to the road. Move on. No, but I appreciate you holding around, Frank. Um, so, do I have um, a motion to endorse the definitive subdivision plan? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. nay. Uh, and any um, abstentions? Thank you. Um, I and then what do you need for the, it says review and approve. Uh, was there a second one? The that, that was the endorsing the definitive subdivision plan. You need a special pen, I think. Do you need a, do you need a special plan, pen for that? No. Okay. Oh, give me that one. Yes, that's what we need the notary for the, yeah. where is it? We brought a nice notary to you. <laughs> Wonderful. Gary from Bank of America. <laughs> you brought a notary? You brought a notary. Do you like to notarize this? They, yeah, they asked to bring a notary. Awesome. B Y O N. Exactly. <laughs> I like it. Do we need a copy before you? And what, what do you need on the plan? We need five signatures on these nine what sheets. On nine. Five, 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 five. Nine to nine times. All right. So what I could Hi, do is just leave good. it in one spot one. and... Yeah. They aren't notarized, so just let, let's here. put them out there and we'll sign them as we leave. I don't think we can get in there very easily once yeah. over here. Could you? I don't know what I just... I just lost my computer entirely, so... What is the last vote we need? Uh, for this item? Or there was three, and my computer just died, so the third thing... Well, the next thing... What kind of cord do you need? Prove... Pre-construction documents. The homeowners association. Yeah. So uh, the decision that you guys are okay with having the homeowners association documents provided. That's what I thought. Is and uh, is there any discussion on that? Um, well, I might have one discussion. Yeah. And I and I grant you the, the 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 fact that you know timing is everything and it takes work to put these things together, but it, we're going to have to revisit it. It's just another thing that's coming back to us. You know that we're going to need to revisit, mm -hmm. and if we if we try to streamline this a little bit, this process which we were talking about earlier about how are we going to streamline our process a little bit, that in in the future I think applicants should be aware that these kinds of things are cannot be put off until the first house. I mean, we need to have everything all together because we just don't have the time of day. But well, we, well, we all we volunteer. You know, we don't know who we are actually selling it to if we are. So we can't put something in place that the you know before the first house is being built. They may want to do something different with the homeowners, so I don't. That's why we have to do it later. Well, there's st standard language. So I'm going to suggest that we remember that we go through me. Yep. Yep. But go ahead to the chair. Yep. Well, there's standard language packages that homeowners associations create, especially in individual homes, and I think that um, you know they can be mended. But I think that in it, you know I think it just in respect to our time, we just can't keep revisiting these these things all the time. I mean, there's going to be other things that we'll have to come, come and you know, see see with them and 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 monitor their project. And so I'm sure there will be for future reports, but hopefully they'll be consolidated at you know at that time. That's a fair point, Deb. Anybody else? 
I was just going to ask about process. We have the notary here. Is that for signing um, this? That's for what we just that's signed. For the form. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, you Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, what do you have okay. here? I don't know what you're saying. Check is good. Oh, okay. All right. Um, oh. So well, this is all voted. What you say? Yep, we have to sign it. And there's one more vote we need to be fine with getting the extending the deadline, extending the deadline for the um, construction, the homeowners yes. agreement. Yep. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion on um, the request to extend the homeowners agreement so condition. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. And any abstentions? Stay. Okay. All right. Thank you. In your, that's the votes you need. All right. Okay. Um, we should sign these. Do, do you guys want to go ahead? Do you want to do the? Oh, we have to do the contract for sure. Okay. That's a quick. Um, you have to sign all that stuff too. No, they have to sign. They have to sign. Got that. I don't know if that. Probably Gary's. I think it's that back. No. Do you want to put that? Let's have a loose. Oh, I don't even. I don't even know. Oh, okay, that's okay. So I think I got confused with the pile, right, but I think I got uh, the right one. I'll oh, sign. I'll run into it. <laughs> What else are you going to sign? Georgia on my mind. Georgia, right, right on this line. Georgia, there are nine of them. What trip are you going to Yes. Oh, you had today? Oh, well, five hours. Five hours. Just try one. Depending on traffic. Georgia, I'm recording. Blue. Blue. I'm recording this, right? Yes, so I'm going to, but I would like to make a copy for our record. Um, I know this is on the first floor at least. Want to make a copy here? In this hall? Okay. Yeah. This is We're not going to be here much longer, are we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just write We can just list the names down here, can't we? Yeah. Okay. All right, you have to find the yeah, so either be the all these oh, arguments I'm just saying. Second, so I can just look for your signature. Yeah. I can go. Yeah. 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 Thanks, guys. Freddie, you just drive to the airport tonight. I crossed my mind. What time is your flight? Six Nice. I was going to fly out here. Do you need to verify there? I was feeling sorry for myself getting up at five, but not anymore. Is the rest of town hall air conditioning? Just not yeah. yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, you can my office is free. Unless we can have them. It's going to be fall soon. Everybody stay calm. It's going to be great. It is. It is. If I can keep it right too, I'm going to expect everybody else to. Yeah, right. Yeah, we that qualifies as a great attitude. And I felt bad about the chairs because it's looking at these comfy chairs, but. Let's keep signing. Oh, no, you're all. I'll have to sign like a second one. Yeah. Or a third one. I'm done. Uh, no, I think they just have to sign. Okay, so here's some Uriel Kramer. Maybe it should take a mile. Oh, the ones out here? Super nice. Very special. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Hey, how we doing? 
So it's going to be Stephen Carl. What do you think that really means? You know how we voted at Tony. The pillars for the highest spot. No. The highest. <laughs> Say it again. It's on Greenwood Road, the highest point. Listen, it keeps it family oriented. Okay. Can we, um, ladies and gentlemen, can we vote the contract? No, sign. Keep signing. But can't we vote the contract while you're signing? Yes, of course we are. I think as long as the microphones can pick us up. Yes, as long as so. I think only two at a time can work. This is the best. Oh, the, right. Sorry. All right. We're gonna actually, yeah, just gonna move people away from the microphone. Hey, it's so hot. I don't know how you're supposed to be. And if it works, I would like to entertain a motion on uh, the engineering contract for beta. For beta. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? For this project? Not for this project, that. for the year. Oh, for the year. Okay. Renewal of their contract. The beta contract for the next year. Um, so are there any questions or is there any conversation? Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. We're having a discussion. We're having this discussion. Is there a discussion on the beta? Oh, I was yeah. just going to say, I thought they've been doing an excellent job. I think they've been doing it, yes. I understand in, that we should renew for next year, but we should next year, we've had a lot of changes, next year have uh, competition and bidders and, and uh, uh, other companies to evaluate. Uh, something we've done historically, um, when I started with the CONCOM, for instance, we, my, one of the very first things I did was we had different bidders come in, different companies come in. And so every three years or so is generally what we've done, I, I believe. But uh, so uh, I am not opposed to understanding the history because I haven't been here that long. Just next process. year, kind of thing. But we future. should talk about it now because we aren't going to impose something necessarily on a future board. So have the conversation in the next couple of meetings when there's a piece of time, so we understand how long they've been here and so forth. But right now, I'm fully in support of. Okay. Further in this contract. Carol, I apologize. I did not know you were out of the room. We moved and seconded the beta contract, and we're having a discussion now. For a one-year um, extension. For a one-year extension. Um, I, I should say it's a little bit chaotic here, but um, they have been very helpful to me in understanding the work that's in front of us. Um, and I think that um, not only have oh, they done a really professional job, exactly. but they very often are um, unbelievably responsive and tight. In tight turnaround. Specifically, yes. Phil as well. He's yes. an excellent engineer. When was the last time we did that out? So that was Frank's point, and I don't, I don't know the answer. Or just by the chair. Yeah, I was going to say probably two or three years ago, we did a full RFP. We had probably three or four vendors actually come in and talk to the board. Probably three or four vendors actually come in, make up their presentation to the board, and after the presentation, the board then voted on essentially the board to beta. Um, I will echo Frank, Frank's comment. I think a one-year extension is perfectly fine. I'd be very happy with the work that Beta has done. I do think, uh, just as a part of due diligence, when every three or four years we should do that RFP process. I, so, I, required every couple of years to. to I don't know what the requirement is, to be honest with you, but I I, I totally agree that it is never um, is never a bad idea to competitively bid contracts for the town. I do have one special question. You, 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 here. Is Phil's role going to maintain a system or He has done an outstanding job. Um, we did see the system for the first time today, right? I don't remember anything that anybody remembers. Yeah, Jill. Jill. She's, uh, she actually, Jill. I just joined her on a site visit for the mm -hmm. OG facility. So I don't think she's taken over, but he, she just started there, so he's kind of mentoring her. Awesome. Um, uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I think the only other thing was minutes. Again, an excellent job, Kobe. Um, I, I'd entertain a motion on the 625 minutes. Second. Is there any discussion? That's not that right. It doesn't matter. You can still vote, but there you go.
I know people, more people have to sign. All right, so we got we'll have to double check our work for sure. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, and then the seven, what day? Nine, seven, nine minutes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on those minutes? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstaining. Carol's abstaining. We need to make sure we have five signatures on each mylar of voting members. So, I think you need either me or Frank, right? Well, because we were, we were both voting this one. Jad, I think there's a couple back here. You may need to sign. Uh, one, two, three, four, four, five. We got five, right? One, two, three, four, five. We have five without you. Yep. Mary, did you sign them all? No, I, I wasn't needed. As you are needed, actually, as a fifth, because two people who voted no on the original project prefer not to sign. Okay. Thank you. I would if I had to. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> I'm going to go home and say goodbye to my daughter who goes off to college tomorrow.